everybody, and welcome back. And I would like everybody to get up and leave the room. Oh, how awkward is it to talk to him while he's in the bath? <laughs> Elliot, I can't have anything happen to you here. You understand that? I know. You don't leave in the middle of one job to do another. The door kind of swing open and someone steps out onto the porch. The dog. I'm gonna sort of get down um, and and I'm I'm gonna um, be like. <laughs> it's it's like creeping a little closer to you. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tabletop Notch. Uh, we're thrilled to have everybody back this week for Chapter Twelve. <laughs> a dirty dozen. We've reached we've reached a dirty dozen in Broncolo. Shut. <laughs> that's a phrase. Yeah. Yeah, dirty dozen. It's thirteen. It's said like that. All no, I won't dozen. speak that's anymore. <laughs> okay. Starting out. <laughs> He's gonna swap places with Micah, the halfling who doesn't speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, nice, nice, nice. Mm. nice, nice. We mm -hmm. left off uh, with a lot going on. There was a bit of a, a fracas at the music box uh, that um, was Morna and TC to the rescue for the snake charmer. That was the preacher who showed up. And in addition, uh, Doxley is in the middle of, of something a little, a little bigger than herself Stop and me. waiting to see what oh, Niall has to say. Uh, so, so we have some some exciting things going on, but before we dive into the campaign, as always, we have a few announcements. And before we get to our announcements, shut up. Anthony, <laughs> <the> <laughs> throw some Anthony, pick that up. Are you ready? Go. I think. I think it's in here. <gasps> no. In the bag. It dropped into the, the three? into the merch. Damn it! No. It's <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard it could have rattled around. Go look like, wait, for it because you're not starting the night anyways. Go look. What we have Before we get to our yeah. real announcements, <laughs> um, we would like to throw it over to Erica for some exciting developments in the world of Percy oh. Jackson. Okay, there's very little I can say about what I've been doing for the past week and what's coming up next week because I don't want Disney to, you know, snipe me from wherever they have. They do love this show. Yeah, um, but I'm wearing my Percy Jackson merch tonight because Percy Jackson on Disney Plus starts dropping um, December 20th and I have a podcast, it's called Seaweed Brain and we are going to be covering the show extensively. We're doing watch-alongs every Wednesday night. Some of these people will be there for that. And we're also doing analysis recap episodes every Friday. Um, so we're gonna talk about every episode Episode, plus we're dropping a bunch of tea from the press uh, tour that's been happening that's coming out Thursday. Anyway, if you like Percy Jackson or if you don't and you're interested, you should come and find us because it is literally about to be the Percy Jackson renaissance and you will not be able to escape I just started reading this They're franchise. delightful. Yes. They're amazing. There's I'm literally no way that there's no overlap between our fan base and Percy Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, very excited. Yeah. 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 Seaweed Brain again, the name Seaweed of the Seaweed Brain. I think we have a link to it somewhere in our uh, I know it's recommended in our like podcast, no, yeah, Spotify stuff. Wiki. Oh, Under oh, I think it, yeah, it's on the wiki too. Yes. Wherever no, no, you no, no. follow wiki. us, you should follow them. Yes, yes. all the socials. Yeah. And speaking of following us, there's lots of places to do that. <laughs> oh, thank you for coming to the Sunday night Twitch stream. Tuesdays, <laughs> though, you can get the podcast version wherever you podcast. Uh, uh, rate us and uh, take part in our polls and such, um, <laughs> our weighted polls and leading questions, every one of them. Excuse me, how dare you? <laughs> Loaded questions. <laughs> the YouTube, any excuse to use Kevin McLeod's farting around. Farting around? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, very good. <laughs> if you're more visual, you can join us on Fridays for the YouTube drop, but if you're a Patreon subscriber or a YouTube member, you'll get those early on Tuesday. Um, Yes, please, uh, follow us there, like us, uh, subscribe. We, we love all the comments you guys leave on the YouTube uh, video. We um, got some of that little extra money, YouTube members, for starting the program and stuff, so thank you, everybody, yes. so, so much. Yeah, we were, uh, yes. Yes. We're a so team effort. rich now. <laughs> uh, no, but really. We crazy. should have showed up in, like, tuxes. <laughs> <laughs> Google thing. The money drop. <laughs> like the Monopoly man. Okay, yeah. Google. <laughs> so just thank you all yes. for, for you supporting the show. And we're almost at 50 members now, which is crazy oh, cool. Yeah. I didn't think that was going to happen. Oh. Thank you, yes. YouTube. Please find us there. Uh, follow. This is a great place to, to catch up on the old episodes, even our old campaign. I saw there's people in the chat tonight who are just finally catching up with campaign one. Yeah. Holy wild. Holy thank you, thank you, thank welcome. you. Uh, um, but uh, now it's exciting. Run call stuff. Um, <laughs> social media, as we said, all your, your TikToks and your Instagrams and your X's. 
Uh, forgive my eye roll. At Tabletop Notch, <laughs> all of those places. Find us and follow us and like us and uh, tell your friends about us. Uh, finally, the Discord is popping every week. Wow. There's a great it's newest really episode wow. discussion thread. There's great fan art. There's great oh, little edits? clippies and edits oh. of folks. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for each one of those. Maybe, maybe we'll pop that one out for Notch and so it doesn't. Me. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, please join us at Discord. There's a, a very robust and active community that we love each and every one of. Thank you to our boosters and our mods over there, all the timestampers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can go find that die. Oh, yeah, you've done, you've done you it. said it very briefly, but I will also mention Notch and Soda after tonight's yes, show, yes. at the end of tonight's show. Uh, we have a little subscriber-only uh, Q&A talk back um, where we just shoot the shit about the episode, talk about um, what happened and what might be happening next and theories and answering questions from the chat. So stick around, hang out. Yeah. And, uh... Also, if, you, if you're watching on TikTok, we just started like the subscription program. We don't have any at the moment, but like if you want to stick around for the Notch and Soda on that platform, we'll stay live if we have them. Um, so yeah. You can or, also uh, subscribe on Prime for yes. free. Oh, it's free. So if you want to stick around and draw? subscribe on Which Prime, Prime yeah, then you yeah. can watch us tonight. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> this Thank night. you. You're the best. <laughs> um, oh, I uh, made a little social media post about it, but really quickly with the merchandise, we added a couple new items. Um, one of which is a Brunkhalo themed Christmas card to the style of the Samson and Samson catalog. So cute. That's super duper cute. You, if you if you buy any merch and spend over like fifteen dollars on merchandise for the next like two weeks or so, you get a free Brunkhalo Christmas card as well. You just have to put it in your card. Free. It won't do it automatically. You just have to put it in your card, and then it'll be marked as free. Yeah. And oh yeah. yes, and we have merch. That. More merch as well. I have everybody else. Oh, so much merch. More merch. Wait. Um, more merch. Wait. Wait. <laughs> um, so yeah, go ahead and check that out. And then Patreon members, you're going to get the Notch and Soda Top Notch people on Thursday as well as YouTube members. And I don't know if you wanted to talk about any of the other Patreon stuff. I know we've chatted a lot already. Yeah, I'll do the brief thing, but uh, we're between them at the moment. But every month we do a Patreon drop that's usually sort of homebrew stuff or things that you've seen in the campaign, hopefully written in a way that you could toss them into your campaign. Um, the most recent one, without going into too much detail, because it's delightful, so you have to read it for yourself, yes. was Book of Prayers and Hymns of Brunkalo, which includes both the written lyrics to the hymns and prayers, also some recordings by Jordan of how the, the melodies, so you can sing along and add them to your campaigns <laughs> and have creepy religious creatures. Just bangers. People just like Laura <laughs> and I love bangers. it. Love it. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think there's a lot of people waiting, so let's. It was, oh, I have to thank people. Thing. What am I? Yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to like thank brush this shit up. Uh, I'm not on top of my shit. Gratitude. Excuse me. A lot of people to thank. The people <laughs> waiting are me. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> What's Niall Love doing? Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Talinda resubscribed. J-Bomb resubscribed. Sappy Cobra 94 gave out a community sub. Golden Dagger did 1,050 bits. Thank you so much. Ali Slayer resubscribed. Rowan KT reached seven stream streak. I don't, these things keep popping up. It's great. Thank you. Uh, Wild Me Popsicle also. Thank you. Uh, Lowbrass Guy 400 bits. Wiz Renang gave out five community subs, seven sub streak. Are you all just putting this in now? I have no idea. Alpha R79 resubscribed. Untimely Gnome subscribed with Prime. Thank you so much. X Piglet PXX uh, resubscribed. Alpha R79 uh, did two community subs. Alex Slayer 100 bits. Cool Shaper resubscribed. Cool Shaper did 500 bits. Weir's Bolock resubscribed. Pokodoga did resubscribe. Viking Master uh, did a seven stream streak. Jade, it just starts popping up. I'm just reading. Yeah. J to, uh, to the Izzle, J to the Izzle, of course, resubscribe. Thank you, Mutant Drepsky, semi stream streak. I'm just uh, <laughs> expand from Soul XX 245, well, probably push through, five, push five through. bits. Quell Drama, seven stream streak. Uh, Jared WK, resubscribe with Prime. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, you guys are awesome. Well done. Happy holidays. Okay. Oh. Thank you all so, so much for your support. We really appreciate it. But it is time <sighs> to dive back in to chapter 12 of Brunk Hollow. So, as always, we're gonna throw it over to the recap, then the intro, and then we're in it. But what if I'm scared? <laughs> That's okay. All right, everybody. I still have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> still have to dig that still grave. Still have to do it, yeah. <laughs> Here we go, everyone. Let's go. <laughs> Previously, on chapter 10, Previously, on chapter 11, all hell snakes loose. 
Ilian put a damper on a dinner with Niall Morton when he revealed his intention to forsake the Gore Anan, leaving his sister, who seemed to have plans of her own, in an awkward spot. As Kate took a stroll with Chelsea Montero and learned more about the promulgation line, TC and Morna were sharing a table at the music box, where mutual interest in each other's services set up some late-night schemes at the cemetery and in derelict room number two at Paramount Lodgings. When the in-house musician went to strike up another song, however, he was interrupted by a fleabag preacher, who not only had words of admonishment for our citizens, but also serpents up his sleeve to release upon the unsuspecting patrons. While the two humans helped Vincent with some pest control, Doxley slipped over to the Lucky Heathen for a second secret meeting with Niall, a plan forming there that seemed destined to clash with the efforts of the others. Has Iliad made himself into a loose end that needs to be tied up? Or has he made himself into a five-star chef that the hotel needs to lock down? Stick around and find out on Chapter 12, Brunkhall. I wonder what happened in Chapter 10. Lacking the extensive, intimate knowledge of the topography surrounding Brunk Hollow Valley. The sketches, maps, and markings spread out across the table hold little meaning to you. But if you had to hazard a wild guess, it almost looks like Niall is tracking something, hunting something. The first thing that comes to mind as you get a better look at the papers is that it's reminiscent of charts that monitor weather patterns. Back in Slim Harbor, Addy Frelick had organized a fairly comprehensive relay system with some manned checkpoints and other small settlements along the coast, with the objective being to stay informed of strong winds, flooding, hurricanes. And the pages that are out there before you remind you of those diagrams that she used to keep on the walls of her office. Micah doesn't make a, make a move to join you at the table, not that you expected him to, but with painstakingly slow steps, he circles the perimeter of the room so that he's now directly opposite you. A concerted effort, it seems, to be able to see your face so he can try and gauge your reaction to whatever Nile is about to reveal. And I would like everybody to get up and leave the room for Doxley's no! solo session. Oh, oh my god! Um, um, what? Do amazing, do amazing. No! Everybody, uh, I know that there's a monitor out there. You can leave the visual on. Don't okay. turn the volume on. Um, I knew we were making it to dawn today. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> does so, does someone have their phone? Yeah. Great, I, I will text I to it. let you know. <laughs> Don't <laughs> die, okay? I'll try. Remember, you beat oh god, Anthony. So you can beat anyone. Beat <laughs> what if we didn't have a The scene currently unfolding before you transports you back in your mind, much like it did earlier at the Chop House when you had visions of Slim Harbor saloons. You've been in meetings like this before, though it was usually mom or dad at the head of the table. Clandestine, tense, delicate subject matter. It's been a while since you've been in such a session with Niall, a few years at least, but he looks the part, maybe more so than ever before, Composed, confident, a man with a plan. If you were to ask pretty much anyone who knows me what I do in Broncolo, they'd say that I'm a scout. 
And if you ask anyone with more than just cursory knowledge, they would say, correctly, that I spend a lot of my time scouting the cusp around the valley. You've probably heard it said that scouting the cusp isn't exactly an exact science. We use reports of cleric sightings, accounts from people believed to have crossed the promulgation line, and old records from Fort Contrition about prayers being answered or not during the prison's construction. Stories, mostly. Rumor. To call it imprecise would be an understatement. So I came up with a better system. Working my contacts at the prison, I go there and I borrow some of the more notorious blasphemers, magic users. We could curse the gods every minute of every hour of every day and smear feces across the walls of every church from here to Peron. And the divine wrath that we would draw would look like fucking nothing compared to the hatred that the gods have for the arcane. I borrow one of these prisoners and I take them out to the cusp. I tie them to something sturdy and then I give them a choice. They can cast a bit of magic or I can draw a bit of blood. And then we wait. If a couple of days go by and no cleric shows, we push out a little bit further. And then we do it again. If I see something riding in hot and righteous, I toss the prisoner on the back of my horse and we gallop back to safety. I started on the west side of the valley and I've been working my way through the downwheel for the past couple months. And our understanding of the cusp has never been better. Now, this is all well and good. And I may yet ask for your help in this regard. Two people can chart the area faster than one, after all. But that's not the end of it. Not even close. Early on in the process, <clears throat> and he takes a moment to put his glasses on so he can sort of pinpoint a couple locations on the maps that he has in front of you. Early on in the process, I lost a prisoner to an unfortunate accident. I'd wandered too far away from the spot and the cleric came in so fast, I didn't have a chance to pull him back. Now the warden was angry, rightfully so. He said if I wanted to continue, I had to bring one of his men along to observe our next trip. Make sure I wasn't doing anything stupid or reckless, as if the entire operation wasn't an exercise in precariousness. I didn't want to lose a second prisoner in the span of a week, so instead of going somewhere new, I took my escort to a spot that I'd already charted. That way I figured I could demonstrate the process without any chance of being taken by surprise. I strapped the prisoner down somewhere that I knew to be safe, and the two of us waited. Not 12 hours into our stakeout, the skies light up, and a cleric comes barreling through. We both run for the prisoner, and as I'm dragging him in, the man who's with me steps out too far and gets blasted to ash and cinder. The warden's man. I used it as an opportunity to tell the warden that the mission is too dangerous for any scout who's not properly versed. But make no mistake, I was shook. I felt like everything I'd done, all the time I'd put into this, all this work, was for nothing. The warden was beside himself. He cut me off for a short while. But eventually, he cooled down and saw fit to give me another chance. Now, I retraced my steps all the way from the beginning. And do you know what I found? If you tell me that the cusp is shrinking, Niall, 
I'm gonna be one sad little sea elf. <laughs> what if I told you that the cosp isn't shrinking, but it's moving? That's also not so wonderful. And either way, I'm certain of it. Now, it's not moving so much that we should be running for the hills right this instant, but it was enough for me to notice in just a few months of my reconnoiter. Now, all this is part about the cost moving. Warden doesn't know this. What it all boils down to is the fact that in a few years, if things continue as they are, this valley, Broncolo Valley, is going to be teetering on the edge. I certainly had my pick of the litter, and at this he kind of looks over to Micah. When it came to who I thought could make best use of this information. I'll bore you with the details of that decision some other time, but I ultimately settled on Izzy, and a plan was made. A ways to the north, almost right on the edge between the downwheeled and the upwheeled. There's a place where two rivers intersect. And this would make for an excellent spot for a new settlement. There's already a few people that have staked out claims there, but nothing's built there yet, nothing permanent. In part because Broncolo already exists. And also because there are some fearsome beasts about. Now these creatures are enough to deter people for now, but faced with a choice between the wilds and going back under the gods' eyes, well, for most people that's hardly a decision at all. We want to buy up those claims and to keep the area dangerous enough to be uninhabitable until the time is right, all the while not showing our hand as to the play we're making. Oh, and if possible, figure out what's causing the cusp to move so we can stop it once it gets past Broncolo. Right. If it sounds ambitious, it's because it is. But imagine owning every piece of land around here before the first shovel broke ground. The Gore Anon ran the docks, but they still had to play nice with the ministry. With this, there is no upper limit to our influence. You know, There's a lot of work to be done, but first and foremost, I think there's something that you're well suited to. But before I get to that, you had a question. Not so much a question, but merely a statement that over the last two years since you've been Away from the Gore Onan, and we've been trying to get my parents to actually expand in earnest to this place. I was mourning that the opportunity was lost, that Broncolo was already claimed. There's so many people here already, and it's just been a few years. But if we can have a second chance at this, without my parents getting in the way, that is something I look forward to, Niall. Cost moving. Doesn't sound so bad now, eh? No, you're <laughs> right. Getting it to stop, though, that's gonna be a challenge. I, I agree. Part of my scouting efforts are not just to figure out exactly where the cusp is and where it's moving, but to find the entire circumference of it. Because I suspect that perhaps Right in the middle is where we're going to find some answers. And of course, nobody else knows exactly where that middle is. And that's what we're endeavoring to find out. As to your short-term aspirations, there's something that serves the dual purpose of furthering our interests and also proving to Micah here that my faith in you is not misplaced. As you know, Izzy wants exclusive access to Mr. Claiborne's wares. Most importantly, he has access to potions 
of beast control. And that sounds familiar to you, and not only does it sound familiar, you put a little two and two together, and you think that the potions you saw him take out and put on Izzy's desk very well might have been that, now that he sort of jogs your memory. There, there are potions of, he called a potion of beast control, but that's actually not its technical name. They're potions of mind control, and there's several different kinds of them. Some of them work on humanoids, some of them work on beasts, some of them work on, so he's, he's looking for beast ones specifically. Okay. And these are exceptionally rare, and outside of Brunkala would be, that, that's magical contraband outside of Brunkala. These potions of beast control are essential to our plot to make that area up north seem uninhabitable. We get people to sell their claims for cheap, and we keep people away from there while we figure out the rest and wait for the cusp to close in on Brunk Hall. And we would like you to give Mr. Claiborne a push in the right direction. Understood. Is that something you think you can do? I hope we're not harming him, mainly for the purpose of it sounds like we'll be needing him for quite some time. I agree. I think harming him for the most part, at least to the point of no return, would be counterintuitive to our interests. Is that how Izzy feels as well? It is. Good. This first batch that he's brought is not the only batch that we're going to need. They don't last that long, so... Every time that we hear about someone wandering in that direction, we'd like to have the opportunity to have something wander through that might scare them off. So you're not looking for things to nest there. You're just looking for things to travel by. The problem is you can try and get them into that area, but there's no guarantee they're going to stay when the potion wears off. So maybe some of them stick around, maybe some of them leave. In any case, we want to make sure that that area gets a reputation for having Creatures that you don't want to go near. How'd you leave it with Mr. Claiborne last you spoke with him? I encouraged him to... make himself invaluable to Izzy, to ensure that his safety is kept in place. That was the final word of it, anyway. Nothing said that couldn't be... Uh misconstrued as manipulation if you were to turn back in the other direction. Well, he also saw the offer that Izzy offered, the, the amount, and was quite struck by it. That uh, stuff I said back at the chop house with Ilian, you can largely ignore that for now. It may well end up tying into our plans later on, but it was mostly just for show. And he reaches into his sort of pocket of his uh, jacket there, and he takes out that wrinkled envelope that he had before that he sort of placed down. And this time, instead of placing it on the table, he flips the sort of, uh, just the edge, and he opens it up and pulls a piece of parchment out, and he puts it down and he slides it. And it's blank. It's best if your brother continues to think that that's what we're doing. So every time that we ride out into the downwield or any time that we're having a meeting, it should be under the guise of trying to work up this protection scam. That's fine with me. That's not outside of his imagination either. <clears throat> I'd like you to talk to me now a little bit about Ilian and whether or not he's someone we should be worried about. No, you don't have to worry about my brother. Honestly, I have a feeling that if he doesn't find something here for himself soon, he's going to be leaving. <clears throat> I don't really see himself fitting in here. He didn't come here for this. So what did he come here for? Fuck if I know. Make a persuasion check. Oh! Okay. Seven. Seven. You just see Niall kind of raise an eyebrow. And in addition, you flick your eyes over to Micah who just sort of is 
straightens and shuffles a little bit. Look, did my brother come here to go against my parents and hatch another scheme with you? No. But he definitely wants nothing to do with the Goreo Nan. He won't go back to him. Even if he does leave here, he's not going back there. If we leave him to do his business, and it doesn't conflict with ours, he'll be fine. And in fact, I have a feeling if he does stay and do something that he actually wants to do, there'll be opportunity for us there as well. I'm sure I don't have to remind you that Micah and Izzy are the ones working over at the courier office. I don't want to see or hear about any letters coming through there of Ilian writing back home. Understood. I know Ilian better than the people I keep, keep company with, but if they were to see something like that, they might get the wrong impression. Yes, I can envision that as well. Anything else you'd like to ask me? There was one question, actually, and it does kind of coincide with what you just mentioned. As far as keeping a perception that I'm here for the Goryeo Nan and on behalf of my parents, what kind of correlation do you want me to have with them? You can tell them that things are going well. And do I have permission, and she'll look to uh, Micah, to do that kind of correspondence through your office? Good. Because until we get enough muscle, or enough influence here, if the Gory find out, I'm just gonna get extracted, or they'll save money on the courier ticket and just kill me where I stand. I have a hard time envisioning your parents making that order, but the point stands. A slow drip of information back to Peran. This isn't gonna happen overnight, so the charade has to stand. That's why I said that that plan that I spoke of back at the chop house, it's not really the goal, but some steps will need to be taken so that perhaps if your parents send somebody here to have a little look-see, they might see that the things are happening that they want to be happening. Maybe some small undermining of the Merkal or something to that effect. I'll keep my ear to the ground for opportunities, something that's not too disruptive. Imagine that uh, Izzy will want to have a longer discussion with you sometime in the coming days. I think Micah will find you if that's going to happen. Anything that I need to know about in case the discussion between Gujek and Izzy happens sooner than that? No. Was there a meeting set to take place between Gujek and Izzy to revisit the terms of their negotiation? It was, but it wasn't set. I would say, make sure you speak to him before then, but don't press the issue. Don't want him to think that you talked to someone and then came back to him with that express purpose in mind. I can do that. Niall. This is gonna be fucking incredible. Aye. Uh, it is. It's good to have you here, Doxley. To hell's with the Gorian on. Time to carve out a little something for us. I'll cheers to that. He pours his shot, and there's another glass on the table, and he sort of moves the bottle over as if to pour it. He looks up to Micah, who's sort of Not a man to drink on the job. That's fine. Whatever we are, we're not the Goreonan. <sighs> About fucking time. I'm gonna clean up these charts and figure out where I'm headed next. I'll be doing some scouting, as I said, still trying to determine both the rate at which the cusp is moving 
and both sides of the cusp so I can get a better reading on where that center might be. That just reminds me, actually. Is this what that meeting was about, the town meeting? No. I wasn't there. I met the requirements for being in Broncolo long enough, but nobody was invited to the meeting that doesn't have a permanent place of residence. I needed to have a demonstration of investment, I suppose. However, I know what they spoke of. I know people who were there. They dug up something at one of Bison's sites, some kind of monument, statue or something. I guess it had the whiff of religion about it because a number of people got spooked. Doesn't seem to mean anything to me, but I'll look into it. It's interesting. I guess they held a vote of some kind. Decide what to do with it. Break it down, bring it up, bury it. To my understanding, the vote went the way that uh, seems like the coward's way out, which was to bring it up. Just in case. Sure. <laughs> Just in case is the motto of the religious fools. Well, enjoy that venture, I suppose. There oh. is no one that knows about the moving of the cusp except the people in this room and Izzy. And believe me when I say we don't take it lightly letting another person into that circle. I told Mike I couldn't do it without you. I better not be wrong. You're not. Let me collect my things and have a word with Micah. Enjoy the evening. Cheers, Niall. Cheers. Micah? One more wink. Yep. He makes no indication at all. It looks like Niall kind of goes back to his papers. He's collecting a few of them. He sort of jots down a couple notes and you head back out. You take one last look kind of back into the room and the two of them, Micah doesn't speak, but he kind of goes over Niall's shoulder and looks down over the charts and gives one kind of last look up and then back down. And we're gonna let everybody back in. <laughs> As uh, Doc Slee lets the door shut behind her, she's gonna just quietly to herself, just... Yes! Oh. oh, okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Compose herself. Head on out. You head down that hallway and you get to the sort of end of the staircase there where on the right now, it was on your left the first time, but on your right now is that room that you went into, the, the Monteros, where you met them for the first time. You just sort of pause there at the very top of the staircase. Head back down. You get into the uh, sort of area of the Lucky Heathen, you sort of move through that gate that sort of separated the staircase from the main floor. As you do so, you see Teddy, who doesn't sort of come over to meet you, but he does acknowledge your presence from like across the room. This is like from a distance here. And then goes back to his business. He has a tray of drinks that he drops off at a couple of the tables, mingling between all of the poker and the roulette and the Broncol of double pass. Coins being thrown, smiles being shared, laughs being had, and the whole place, it almost, that interior manifestation of excitement that you felt in the hallway now, sort of everyone in your mind, everyone in the room is almost excited for you. All the cheering, <laughs> all the laughing, all the smiling. It feels like something's broken through here. And despite me texting the group, no. Oh. <laughs> so I'm gonna go get them. Guys, Hang tight. get it together. <laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome to Table Touch. Nobody on our Anthony was, Anthony was making sorry. silly faces. Anthony was putting candy in his mouth and making silly so faces. Much. I'm sorry. <laughs> I literally said, <laughs> it was Anthony's have your phone so you can get the Do not disturb. Show them the face you made. I, I <laughs> Thank you. 
Did wow. you text all of us? Yes. yes. It's on the group chat. Oh. <laughs> oh. So oh. you are all equally. Yeah. <laughs> I blame oh. Do Not Disturb. Well. <laughs> How are your silly faces? Can I, can show, I them. show them? Show them right it, now. Do it, do it, do it. What are you? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> right right to the camera. <laughs> oh my god. New emo. New that was, emo. That was pretty it. much it. <laughs> Isn't that distracting? Wow. <laughs> you look like a who. Uh-huh. <laughs> After a turn at the music box proved more sobering than intoxicating, play now. a quiet walk back to Paramount is just what the doctor ordered. TC and Morna are joined by Kate, and in turn, those three are spotted by Ilian, who's working his way back from a productive discussion at the smithy. Torches and lampposts have been lit all along the main stretch of the thoroughfare to keep the darkness at bay, and pockets of work-weary citizens cluster around them to swap gossip and stories of their time in the mines today. Unsurprisingly, word of the sermonizer and his demise seems to be spreading quickly, you see several individuals reenacting the events, sort of motioning with the crossbow and the snake. <laughs> Plus one or two others that are placing hats to their hearts to mourn the loss of those who succumb to snake bite. Oh, right. <laughs> Looking through the open doors of the hotel, the kitchen area is buzzing in much the same way. And Bassett Clemens, while recording notes in his ledger, can't help but kind of turn an ear up to try and listen in his curiosity getting the better of him. Both outside and in, you hear the word flea bag being thrown around quite a bit in a derisive manner. And you imagine that this incident isn't doing newcomers any favors as it sows the seeds of distrust. So you guys are approaching the entrance of the Paramount, which you can see into the three of you and Ilian, you're kind of off at a distance there, but you can see them there from, from a little ways down the thoroughfare. News travels fast around here. Uh, it does. <gasps> I hope nobody will want to interview me about our part in it. Why not? Seems like another good moment of reputation building. I suppose. <laughs> and as they've lingered for a moment to talk outside the hotel, Alien also comes and joins. Hey. And you notice, I'll say, even before you start to talk to them, as you were kind of moving down the thoroughfare, you weren't sure if people were like talking about you, but there's a lot of people like, like quietly, sort of excitedly, mm -hmm. there's kind of a, an energy about the crowd here. Do you know what is going on around here? Mm. It's exciting stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll let these guys explain. Your dinner pulled you away from some excitement this evening. There was an attack at the music box. Oh. A flea bag came in off the wagon, let snakes out of his coat and there was a fire, and it was all very exciting. <laughs> Sorry your dinner was so eventful. Um, was anyone hurt? Yeah. Yes. The man, the attacker was killed, and then a couple of uh, patrons at the the tavern, and they they lit a fire to, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little overwhelmed. Yeah. Doesn't, uh, oh. am I wrong? Does Morna also have a nasty looking little bite on? Did you get bit I once? didn't get bit. You didn't? I didn't okay. get bit. No, uh, I remember it. Uh, thank goodness. Um, it wasn't well. just a usual flea bag, though. No. He was preaching. Oh, religious type. Yes. I talked about how filthy we all were, and thought that he might cleanse us with a a jacket full of snakes. I see. I let them loose. They killed a few of the patrons, but I was able to fell him. Did he have any connection to anyone in town? Did was he? Did were able to discover that? Did not get a chance to ask. I see. It happened very fast. Well, and uh, yeah. So yeah, we didn't eat. <laughs> so we're gonna eat now. Oh, I'm kind of stuffed. Uh, oh. Was was your evening well? It went okay. It went okay. Can I make a perception? <laughs> <laughs> you can make an inside check. Inside check on <laughs> make an inside check. You also clock the fact that adding to the sort of the oddity of his response, you notice that he came from the west, like yeah. in the direction which is not where the chop house is. So like, mm. it seems like he came from somewhere else. <laughs> nice uh, two. <laughs> Other than the fact that's what I got. Other than the fact that he seems to not have been coming from the chop house, you, you don't pick up anything in particular. 
Okay. Uh, food was nice. Uh, I would highly recommend the chop house. Mm. Where's your sister? Uh, she was at the chop house, um, but it's been a while since then. If she's not at Paramount, she's probably off on business. I honestly don't know. I hope it was no worse than our night. Uh, well, snakes and a crazy preacher, I would say I got the better deal of the night. Um, but yeah, no, uh, are you guys head off to dinner now? Oh, just a bite before an early, early night's sleep, yes. Gotta see whatever Kenzo's got cooked up tonight. Mm. Oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe he's got some good mushroom stew going on. I don't know how much we, we shared a bit of a recipe. It was, uh, it was lovely. Kenzo's great. He's a great cook. Oh, you gave him a recipe? Yeah, we cooked together, actually. Oh. Uh, and he's lovely. Once you get to know him, he's a little thick-skinned, but he's a very sweet, nice guy. So you don't need a cookbook after all. Uh, well, I only know a handful of recipes, like, in my brain, the cookbook. I want to learn more. Uh, maybe you and Kenzo should make a cookbook together. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, he wanted me to come to him if I had learned more recipes, so I don't know how much he's got going on for his own recipe book. But maybe we'll create some amazing new concoctions. It'll be Kenzo wonderful. and Ilian's Kitchen Adventures. That actually sounds... I would read that. I that sounds... <laughs> Yeah. Well, I look yeah. forward to it. All right. I don't know if there's any bookmakers in town. <laughs> wields a great sword as he wields a ladle. Hmm. I hope. A man of many talents. Yeah. That could go on your tombstone. <laughs> I hope that is a long ways off, but I suppose. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> actually, if you guys are going off to dinner, maybe I go talk to Kenzo. I go buy some more mushrooms. I can make it for you tonight. Oh, uh... I mean, I don't know if you like mushrooms or potatoes or... Well, spinach. I don't have any plans tonight, so... Okay. Sh sh sure, uh... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know if... You don't have to stick around if you guys are having an early night, or... Uh, is it a lengthy <laughs> recipe? Nothing elaborate, please. <laughs> no, it's, it's literally just stew mushrooms and potatoes. <laughs> uh, uh, you can check to see if the market is still open, I suppose. I... Okay. You're standing right there, and it, it is... The open market does isn't open, this is like... mm. Well, <clears throat> another evening, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps another I don't time. have any more mushrooms. Uh, let, shall we go in? Please. You guys step uh, into the Paramount, and as you look into the kitchen area, once again, there's a number of people there that seem to be discussing the events at the music box, but also Kenzo is there holding kind of two bowls, and he puts one bowl down on one of the tables, and someone, I didn't order this. <laughs> he puts down another bowl, it's like a hot steaming bowl of some kind of stew or something. You'll like it. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks. Uh. <laughs> At it, Kenzo walks back to the kitchen. And also, as you're coming in, sort of, he seemed to have his attention on the kitchen, but um, Mr. Clemens uh, turns towards you as you enter in. Uh, quite a bit of commotion coming in and out. Uh, if Mr. Warren was here on time to take his evening post. I wouldn't mind wandering over to speak with Mr. Womack directly. Any uh, light that you'd be willing to share on these developments? We were there. Um, uh, what have you heard? Uh, that someone showed up uh, pontificating in a way that upset the patrons. Oh, it was more than that. He released some snakes and they attacked people. Someone let a fire to kill the snakes and it was quickly put out, but uh, Vincent had quite a mess on his hands. Used drow poisoning to subdue them along his inner side of his jacket and then release them. A heavy jacket. Quite. Older human gentleman. Pointed you know chin. Man? Yes. Yes. I, I do not know the man on a personal level. I, I do feel somewhat vindicated that I chose to deny him a room here at Paramount. Hmm. Oh my. There was just something about him that... Uh, I did not like. I told a small fib and said that there were no rooms to let and pointed him in the direction of one of the tent communities. Which one? Both. I'm not sure which one he chose. Right. Hmm. It was just a couple of hours ago. I, I believe he came in off the Beth Howell wagon. Yes, that is what we were told. Did you happen to let a room uh, to a gentleman named uh, Langford? <laughs> I did indeed. Did uh, did he seem normal to you? <laughs> <laughs> sort of looks around. There, Kenzo's in the kitchen being weird. There's people gossiping. <laughs> like he, <laughs> being weird. 
Weird in what way, perhaps? <laughs> um, like he was maybe out of sorts, um, almost lost, not fully himself. No, I would say that more accurately describes the gentleman that we were just discussing rather than Mr. Langford. Mr. Langford is an old friend of mine. It, he didn't seem to recognize me when he came into town today, and How I don't know him. Odd. Huh? How very odd. I don't know his medical history or <sighs> what's going on up there, but I would appreciate it if you could keep an eye on him for me. I'm worried about his health. I will try to do so. Um, nothing about it seemed off to me. Well, that's good to hear. Days of travel on the wagon can have a disorienting effect. No doubt. Well, thank you for being such a good judge of character. Yes, uh, I don't know. He just seemed... There was something wrong. He was preoccupied when we spoke. Preoccupied with his own mind, if you catch my meaning. Preoccupied with keeping those snakes from biting him all day. And which prayer he would spout off before he died. Yes, well, no that doubt. I did not know. He also tried to pay for his room in little gemstones, which, as someone not qualified to appraise, I do not accept as collateral. I told him if he wished to rent a room when one became available, he should seek out the bank or the Samson brothers about selling the gems at a fair price. Did you recognize them? Is it, is it something anyone's ever tried to pass off before? I am no expert in the matter of gemstones or valuable minerals, I'm afraid. Odd. Hmm. Strange for someone to come with no gold on their person, I thought. Right. Perhaps he knew he was not long from this world. Perhaps. He did seem disgruntled, but he did not press the issue, and that was the end of our exchange. Well, you did miss an eventful evening at the music box. I suppose I did. I'll garner more details, and perhaps if I pick up on anything else, I will let you know in exchange for the wealth of information that you've shared with me here now. Don't let anyone else claim the killing blow, for that was mine. That was Mr. Welker's. <laughs> proud of that? <laughs> I wouldn't say proud. You're protecting people. I, too, got a strange feeling as soon as he took the stage, as it were. Did you recognize the prayer he spoke? He spoke so quickly and with such a harried manner, I, I maybe snippets of it. Well, you do know a lot of prayers, right, TC? You sing them to yourself, as you said? Yes, there are a handful of hymns from my youth that I would recognize. Was this one of them? Perhaps, yes. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, uh, not to intrude on your evening, but thank you for the update. Yeah. Uh, would you care to join us for a drink, Mr. Tyrone? Even though you've had your supper? If you'd like to have me, I would love to be with you guys. A quick bite. I believe the options are mushroom and potato stew, or mushroom and potato stew. <laughs> <laughs> I am greatly looking perhaps, forward to it. How fortuitous. Perhaps I could eat a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Let All me know right. if you need anything else. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clemens. As they go, can I try to be like, oh, I forgot, and I like, feign that and <laughs> go back and say something to him? Sure, yeah, I mean, everyone walks in the direction right. of the kitchen and you sort of just fall back and yeah, get back. Mr. Clemens, the prayer was breaky, if that means anything to you. I know it, yes. Sort of a, a gruesome bit of text. Uh, dark, yes. He did not finish it. Hmm. Mr. Welker made sure of that. Curious. Yes. Well, I suppose we won't learn more than that, the man having been felled. His body was thrown in the river, so the doc didn't get a good look at him. It wouldn't be the first uh, religious type to take a little swim down the creek. Can only imagine. Not of my accord. Oh, of course. Thank you. Of course. Um, any chance I heard any of that? The <laughs> kitchen's loud. You guys are walking. <laughs> <through. laughs> nah, 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 nah. Sorry. Yeah. Can I get a vibe check from that whole? <laughs> uh, <laughs> vibe? Specifically, what? was he like 
I'm I'm obviously trying to be like nice to this guy because he did me a solid, but um, was there like a threat with that? Was he, did he seem like he, did I buy goodwill from this exchange? Okay, give me an inside check. Did I buy goodwill? <laughs> Gosh. Oh, the Gosh. Uh, 10. 10? Okay. I would say the only thing that you kind of pick up on is the manner of his question as well as sort of his interest in what the prayer was. Mm -hmm. it, perhaps you've heard that other people have come to town maybe telling Broncolo the sin of its ways and maybe he was trying to gauge if like, is it the same prayer they keep using yep. or is it a different prayer? Like, do people keep coming and doing the same bit of recitation? So he was trying to gauge whether this was like a new event or part of a past event, but that's what you kind of, yeah. It, okay. it seemed like something had happened previously that was prayer related and he was trying to see whether those two things matched up. Okay, cool, great. Uh, <clears throat> okay, cool. Great, I'll go and join my Companions. You guys find a table, there's a booth available. As we nice. slip in, I'm gonna turn, turn to DC. <laughs> yeah. Say, so I take it you didn't see any of those gemstones on this man's person? No, no, I, again, he had this very thick jacket with mainly the purpose of keeping those snakes in check, drow poisoning, a, a, a series of loops and clasps. So in theory, if he had any extra of those gemstones, they'd be wherever he was setting up camp. Perhaps. Yeah. Only stands to reason. Are you gonna search each of the lots? I was just curious what you might do with that information. <laughs> there are gems all over this town, I'm sure. I wouldn't know the first place to start looking. Hmm. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so, enjoy the mushroom stew. So mm. this is your creation? Uh, it was a, it was a team effort. The mushroom and the stew part are mine. You okay. should order for us. I bet it'd be nice for Kenzo to see you. Oh, I'm sure he'll come over. I'll say hi, but. <laughs> and as if on cue, ah. Kenzo kind of waddles over and he has a tray that has four bowls already on it without oh. having prompt an order. Mm. Kenzo. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to see that you're serving this. It was, seems to be a big hit, perhaps. Yeah. All right, good, good. That makes me happy, Kenzo. Looks delightful. This one's on the house. <gasps> but just this one. <laughs> of course. Of All course. right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you, Kenzo. He <laughs> smiled at us. He is a lovely man. He's really great. You bring out the best in people. <laughs> the ingredients seem rather basic, but it's tasty. It has a <laughs> nice aroma to it. And Earthy. It's it's both hearty, but like it's he's got some other kind of uh, Mixed into the <laughs> sort of broth has a number of other spices and herbs and things, so it has a pleasant but a simple pleasant taste to it. Mm. This is lovely. Well, if you want seconds, I actually I really can't eat this, um, <laughs> but I couldn't refuse him giving me a dish. Uh, so if anyone wants seconds, please. Uh, uh, no. I think I'll be all right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll take it up to the room or something. Yeah. Sure. <sighs> well, um. What's everyone got going on tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> well, what about tonight? I... You all got dessert plans or something you have to rush on off to? Uh, uh, forgive me. Uh, they said they were going to bed, I believe. Oh, yeah. You know, well, it's been kind of a long day. I completely understand. Do you have night plans, I guess, since you're so eager to know about night plans? Feeling lonely? Okay. Are you looking for night plans? Well, in honesty, I'm still carrying around this bone. <laughs> you want to visit the goblins? I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I haven't decided. I don't know how nocturnal they are, but approach slowly, I suppose. Yeah, maybe it'd be better in the daylight. I just don't have any use for it, and if it's, you know, someone wants it, I figure I might as well return it. Hmm. For a moment there, it was one of the most important things we had. How young and naive we were. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> About yes. 24 hours ago. Mm. Feels longer. <laughs> it does. Uh, no, as of, <laughs> <laughs> no, no night plans as of now for me, but uh, 
Since you asked, I've uh, seen I met the blacksmith, Crenshaw. <gasps> Great. I love that man. You've met Crenshaw? Oh, yes. Did he talk to you of thumpers? Oh, yes, he did. Did you buy one? No, it's on the horizon. It was a bit out of my They are pocket. mad expensive. They are very expensive. Yeah, I I'm want sorry. What, what is a thumper? <laughs> it's a hammer. Oh. A very special hammer. And there's four special ones. And I really want all of them. But... Does that sound familiar to me? <laughs> No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm fixing up my armor, uh, buying some stuff from him, seeing Maeve. Uh, that's about it. Full dance I'll card. Probably go oh. see the Monteros as well. I didn't get a chance to see them today. All oh, right. Uh, Same. Back to him. Yes. Got so oh. distracted. Yeah. yeah. Oh. What? <laughs> Nothing. Not my business. <laughs> mm. Nothing well, that funny. That's hardly fair. <laughs> <laughs> Come well, now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Share your stew with us. Come Share right your thoughts with, with us. Uh, please. Well, if you're, all, if you're okay, all yes. of a sudden, Ilian feels the table turn <laughs> against. <laughs> well, since, out with it, boy. Okay, Kate blush is, and pink. <laughs> since Kate you're is so purple, my friend. Since you're so interested. Okay. Since you're, <laughs> <laughs> since you're so interested, uh, Kate also invited Doxley and I to go get something done in the morning. I believe. Um, I was given a two, three person job to take care of. Ah. Oh. But I have a lot more where that came from. My friend over at the Merc Hall, uh, she's given me a series of tasks for a variety of group sizes. Um, <laughs> who's your Who's your friend over at the, at the Merc Hall? Who do you know? Uh, Daphne. I've made her acquaintance. Sounds nice, like a nice person to know. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Mm. As have I. In fact, if at some point I might have a a, a, a note to send along to her. Is that something you'd, you'd bring over to her for me? Well, that depends. Um, you want a few gold or something as a courier? No, she's a little um, picky about who she works with. So I, I can tell that, and that was kind of the point. I, I, I went over there, and I was basically trying to ingratiate myself, and uh, supposed to do a little bit of research and send her back word and it honestly might be better if I'm, I'm not seen doing it. Research on what? Does anyone here know anything about that meeting yesterday? Well, like I told you in the bathhouse, I, I don't know anything still. She did mention that um, if I started doing some jobs for her, she might be able to share some information with me about that meeting. I figured that she already knew about it. She wanted to see my ability to find out. Hmm. So perhaps maybe if we do well with the job, we can get some info from you and send that to TC, get TC in a good word with Daphne. Everyone's happy. Just a Full. big round robin of good yeah. reputation. Full yeah. circle. Well. Or you can anyway, come on the next job. Maybe, maybe. Tomorrow maybe. will be a long, full day of beautiful opportunities. I can, I can barely stand it. <laughs> Gotta get a good <laughs> night's sleep tonight. I good do. night's rest. That is true. Yes. That is Who knows, true. maybe we'll be back after this mission, you guys will still be sleeping. <laughs> I missed you the other morning, this morning. Uh, I was gonna meet you for breakfast, but yes. I waited around and I didn't see you, so. Well, we uh, are we, humans. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That, is that true. must be hard. We be, need a bit more shut eye we, than, uh, true. than yes. y'all. Uh, but I'm sorry, uh, breakfast didn't work out. Perhaps. And also, dinner didn't work out. Nothing's working out well, as far as dinner and lunch points. Aren't we sharing a table right now? Very true. Very I true. see that as working out just fine. That's true. Thank I you. agree. How do y'all feel about aquatic trolls? Oh my trolls. Goodness. Oh. How much do I know about trolls? Those... I mean, not a ton, but I would say you know enough to know that that's a serious threat. That's yeah. no <laughs> any uh, kind of troll. Quite, I yes. think. <laughs> yeah. quite, quite dangerous. Yeah. Mm. I'd Is say that one of those jobs. jobs that you were talking about? Mm, yes. Oh, how many of trolls? Just one troll? Mm, it doesn't mention how many, but it does say we needed at least seven people. Oof. Oh God. So we'd Maybe have to be that's some like friends. A, a week or two away or something, not our third day endeavor. Oh, I, that's why I'm just testing the waters. Yeah. Pun intended. Well, you've got your friend Nile. We made that friend Ace. Who Perhaps. Knows? Yes. Oh, Nile seems like he's worth at least two people. Well, he got, kind of got caught he by got some caught goblins. By some <laughs> so let's see how he, no, Niall, Niall's good in a fight. He's, oh, half a person? Well. <laughs> I, I joke, Fun Niall's great. Uh, he's just busy, so I don't know how available he would be for things like that. Well, if you see anybody, 
who you think might be helpful. You know, write their name down because no, that could be a big job. Wasn't there that the man in the Woody? You Woody. remember him? Ah, oh, the musician. Woody, who was his, the one who set the fire against the snakes. <laughs> he seemed oh, resourceful. He seemed wily. He seemed very wily. <laughs> we could track him down. We could track him down. Oh, uh, but we'll also table it. Maybe we'll find other people. Yeah. It does have a massive payout. I will say. How big? How massive? Uh, can I buy four Crenshaw thumpers? Has uh, about 700 gold. No, nope, I could not. You know, th it's not quite clear. Oh, no. It doesn't say. It that. doesn't say. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Guess on, depends on how good we fight them. Mm. Right. And Crenshaw, you, you both like. I am quite a fan of him. Yeah, he was a bit inebriated, but a lovely fellow. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Briefly here, um, after you exited your meeting, mm -hmm. Were you headed back to the Paramount or were you headed somewhere else? Yeah, I'll head back to the Paramount. Because I would say, if you were headed back there, I would say you come back in and you can hear the voices, especially your brothers that you know very well in the kitchen area. You can recognize their voices. Do you wish to join them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wanders yeah. over. Yeah, you guys see Doxley. You made it back. Evening. Evening. Yeah. Doxley, we have an extra bowl of soup. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, now, yeah. There's two waiting for you. Is she not allowed one. to have it? No, I made you one extra. It's up in the rooms, but oh. it's oh, probably... I'll eat it. I'll eat it all. Okay, it's probably cold by now, but... Um, good. I'm glad you're... I'm glad you're here to share a meal. Are these the mushrooms? These are the mushrooms. Oh. Well, actually, probably. I don't know if oh. he had more. Mm. Oh. I, I didn't tell you. I originally created this recipe for Doc uh, while we were traveling here from Peron. Ah, oh, sweet. What a good brother. Well, she also got the mushrooms for me, so it's uh, what a good tag sibling. Team. Yeah, good si good sibling. It's closer dynamic. than any family I've ever met. And then any family, <laughs> like not just your own, like this. I mean, that's a big. No, yeah, I'm... I'd say so. I mean, I've only known you guys a couple days, but you have a mighty fine, unbreakable bond, as I can tell. Cook together, draw blood together. Yeah. All right. Cool. How was everybody's evening? <laughs> oh. You missed, yeah, you missed it, yeah. You can recount the same thing. They do. They recount the same thing. What was that? Two snakes, baby. I was, I was batting them snakes off left and right. Wow, you really the Old were. trouser snakes. Oh my God. <laughs> Why? Why do you encourage this? Oh, man. Um, so yeah, that's what they would what do you think. <laughs> Dude, sounds like a right asshole. Mm, well, it's down the river now. Good. Oh, he didn't get a, I mean, not that he perhaps deserves a barrel, but he just got thrown in the river. Aye. All right. Sounds like he murdered a bunch of people, so. Truly. All right. I'm probably gonna head upstairs soon. Mm, Doc, you still in for a, a little job tomorrow morning? Yes, at dawn, you said? Oh, that would be great. What is it again? Uh, we're going to the Eastern Downwield. We're gonna fight some wolves. Oof. No problem. Yeah. Good luck. I was expecting something a bit harder. This will be cake. <laughs> well, you either got wolves or you've got aquatic trolls. Well, so. let's not do the trolls. I'll That's what the wolves I thought. Are the trolls, yeah. It's right. about any one wolf and how many there might be. Is only the three of you going? Mm, that was the recommended number of people. I wolves. thought I could take four. I was going to say, wolves usually run in packs, so... Having seen you fight, Mr. Tyburn, I believe you can. Thank you, Morna. I also wanted to tell you, I'm picking up a yukawa tomorrow. Are you really? I am, and I will ask for your advice. You wish advice. to spar? Mm, practice? <laughs> practice and then a spar. Don't I've practice. never wielded a yukawa, oh, which is... you'll love it. It's great. <laughs> so you didn't sword. go for the short sword. No. Um, I see. I will. Do I just not be offended. cannot spend too much gold all at once. But all right. trust me, my armory will run thick here in Bronk Hollow. So do not worry. My warm tummy will allay my. <laughs> What's the rate for the contract? <laughs> What's the rate for it? Uh, one hundred gold per. Uh. Unclear. Kate's like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you pay for God, that bison? It was 20? <laughs> Something like that. Man, I kind of, at this point, feel like we should have got paid more for that whole scuffle of griffins and dogs and troglodytes and 
Well, now we know Bison's rights. Yeah, I'd rather work for Murkall and these rights. I don't know. Well, it could still just be. It could, it could just, just be a hundred. Yeah, so it's right. about the same rate. Right. Anyway, those also were <coughs> separate jobs. The scouting and then Ace's mission. That is true. Yeah. I'm Hated go. mithril chunks. Yeah. I'm gonna go and uh, get some shut eye. All right. And uh, we be upstairs soon. Yeah, I might just take a brief walk around camp to see what I haven't seen. There's a bank here. If anyone didn't know that, there's a bank in mm. the town. You can get a loan. I, I'm out of I wouldn't recommend it. It. getting loans or uh, that's a sketchy business. I was always taught do not get loans. Uh, so, wow. Do without what you will. <laughs> Is that a Tyrone family principal? Mm. Alien Tyrone CPA. <laughs> <laughs> no, just uh, people I worked with in my family. Uh, one person in particular taught me very much not to deal with things like that. So. Okay. Uh, and if you do, I will pay for you so you don't have interest because that gets nasty really quick. You're going to give me a loan. Well, I feel like no, you should just give us the anecdote at this point. And, uh, never about mind. Your family. Get a loan if you want. I'm not your parents. All right. <laughs> Goodness. I'm learning so much. <laughs> With all these <clears throat> tales of, of beasts and uh, 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 dangers, you've reminded me that I haven't picked up what I ordered from me, so I'll probably quickly head over there to um, replenish the good luck. thing that I tossed at the uh, yes. cleric on the way into town. Yes. Well. Good night. Good night. <laughs> and I'll TC exits the booth. I'll head upstairs. Doxley exits the booth, heads upstairs. Good night. I'm glad you enjoyed the stew. I'm gonna have more when I get up there. It's gonna be gone. <laughs> I'm gonna sort of finish my soup. Well, uh, it was lovely. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna go take a walk around town and then I'll see you in the morning and get some good rest for you humans that rest a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you for um, the soup, Stu. Thank you. It was great. I'm very, very nice. glad that you guys enjoyed it. There will be more to come mm. in Ilian and... What's his Kenzo. name? Kenzo's Adventure in Cookbook. <laughs> Ooh, he would be very adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, oh. That was talent. You was hear him like, here. that guy, and he's like, <laughs> no. Oh, no. no. Kenzo. If, that was a talent blank. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Tater brains over here. <laughs> yeah. Have you all used the baths here? Yes. Yeah, they're lovely. Would you recommend? Yes. Yes. All right. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, just make sure you get uh, Kenzo or Clemens. They'll get you some hot water, and it's just lovely. So. And... All, right. Yeah. All right, good night. Have a nice night. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you're safe. Miss Thank Ishii. You. Does our bedroom mm -hmm. look out over the thoroughfare? It does window? not. Oh. It looks uh, into the alley between Paramount and the building next door. Okay. It, it, depending on like how the staircases are and stuff, can Doxley use anything like reflective or be, be at the top of the stairs to see which direction he goes, Elian? Uh, I mean, there. So if you walk up that first set of stairs, mm -hmm. and then there's a landing, and there's a bunch of rooms. If you were to take a left, there's a window at the end of the hall. Oh, it's okay. not in your room, but that looks out toward the thoroughfare. Oh, okay. I'm gonna do that. Okay. I mean, you left before the others, so you were able to walk up the stairs and kind of be at the window. Ilian leaves the booth and exits uh, Paramount, the two of you. Oh, Kate's gonna go take a bath. Kate heads in the direction of the baths. Morning. Final. I'm gonna finish my stew and actually maybe just sit there and wait for TC. Okay. <gasps> sit my uh, if Tens is there, I'll call over and ask for an ale or something. Sure, he brings you one from the kitchen as well. As Ilian heads outside, you get back out into the thoroughfare. Which direction do you head? Four on the thing, that's the gnome camp where Niall was staying and also- The up. number four? Yeah. That is the gnome camp, yes. And three, the other tent, that's Goblin. the goblins. Yep, that's correct. Um, those are the only places that have those lots? Uh, those are the ones, yes. Presume they have, there's a lot of tents there. There yeah. might be other like, like one tent here, one tent there, like scattered about, but those are the big clusters of tents. That have lots. With, yeah, okay. That, that yeah. maybe have rentable tents. Got it. Yes, got it. Um, those two areas. I think I just first would want to take a walk up to the gnome camp and then a bigger circle and just like see what I haven't seen. So like like the graveyard or the 
Merc Hall and the bank and then return home. Sure. But, but you want to head in the direction yeah, of the gnome camp first? Yeah. All right, great. So you watch, Ilian takes a left out of Paramount because to get up on that ridge there, you do have to like kind of go almost to detention pass and then loop back mm -hmm. around. So you see him walk almost as if he's about to leave town. He kind of heads in that direction. Is that toward the mail house? Uh, mail house? The courier office? Yeah. No, it's in the complete opposite direction. Great, and then Doctor's gonna go to her room. Mm. Ooh, go to your room. Spying. You discover this bowl of stew, lukewarm at this point, but it has been left behind a little bit, a little bit of your brother's care and attention that you've come to know, sort of left behind for you. A little note for you. What's it say? It said, uh, oh, I don't remember what it said. It said like, uh, uh I, if you have- Here's not, some stew, bitch. Yeah, I see, I see you're not home. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the stew. I, I need to rewatch the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh shit, you said it last episode. I, okay, I don't right. think it had any crucial information. You know okay. how yeah. it was. A, just uh, basically feel good. Yeah, I'll kill it. I'll kill the stews. Great. Cool. Let's do it. Um, we'll follow uh, TC here for a moment. Are you actually heading yes. in the direction of Maves? Yes, I will Great. go straight to Maves. You pass through, you go out into the thoroughfare, and as you kind of have the backdrop of the black sky there, you see that the horse and wagon traffic in the thoroughfare has very much given way to the stumbling and striding of those on foot. Normally during the day, there's carts coming through, horses, but now it's just sort of a slow, easy ambling of people back and forth. And just as you saw the night before, there's a small group of people that are sort of carrying these big stones and they're arranging them into a kind of circle and tossing kindling into the center a bonfire on its way for those who seek the comfort of the outdoors rather than in. When you guys came in from your mission prior, there was it was already sort of same place. well stoked. Yeah, right there in the open market, kind of in that exact same okay. area. Yeah. You see the cross-pollination of the town's entertainment establishments in full swing. Liquored up types finding the confidence to emerge from the music box and then head over to the gambling tables, and vice versa, the card sharks having a bad run at the lucky heathen who look for somewhere to drown their sorrows and misfortune. <laughs> You work your way a little further to the south and you listen for the noise of the watermill sort of chugging away there. And as you start to get closer, for a moment you feel like you're having trouble locating it and then you see it and the reason it didn't immediately come to you is there's no lights on, it's completely mm. dark. So the wheel is still turning and the water is still mm. moving, but there are no lights at all, no smoke coming from out the window inside of Maeve's establishment. Mm. Do I see her around the campfire? Uh, the bonfire you area. passed through there and you did. She was sitting there when you, when you came into town last First time. time yeah. So she may well show up there, but you do not see her. At the moment, it's just a few people getting everything together to light the bonfire. Like it's not lit okay. yet. It's just in the early stages. Bollocks. Um, I'll get a little closer to her place. Okay. Yeah. Give me a perception check. <sighs> 24. 24. You creep a little bit closer, sort of listening, waiting, watching. You look kind of to your left and your right to see if Maeve's returning from somewhere to come home. You don't see her in the thoroughfare. You creep a little bit closer, and that noise picks up from the wheel turning. It's a little hard to hear over the wheel. But as you get sort of so close to the window, you can almost touch the side of the water wheel. You pick up on what is perhaps Maeve talking to herself. And without being able to pick up the words, there's something kind of um, self-flagellating about it. A little sort of like, like swearing, cussing, Sort of, you hear something kind of get knocked over and kind of fall around. I'll go around to the front. I know it's late, Miss Crittenden, but may I enter? As soon as you speak, that sort of the cussing, the talking stops. There's no response. Try the door. It's locked. I can come back tomorrow, but please, if there's anything I can do other than my already full plate tonight, please allow me. Nothing. Nothing. 
I thought maybe I could use what I've put an order in for if it comes to desperate measures. Please. I think it'll help. Give me a persuasion check with disadvantage. Oh. Big persuasion. You got this, Anthony. You always gotta be persuading me. Maybe? Natural one. Oh. oh. There he is. Hey. It's quiet. Not only is it quiet, I'll say I'll lump this in with your perception check. It's like suspiciously quiet in that you don't even hear like footsteps or anything. It seems like she has stopped and is like waiting for you to leave. Like she's she's purposely being silent and not moving about the room so as not to imply that she's there or wants to speak with you. I wish us both luck tonight. Rest well, I plan on having good news for you in the morning. Turn. Start to Where are you headed? No. Oh. Um. Oh, back to the Paramount. Um. I, I I've been I've done the circle of the Paramount like I. Especially at that time, I was chasing after uh, my gentleman yeah. there. I mean, you um, were briefly in that back alley area. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a pretty good idea of the layout, like where my win my window looks out back. I know that. Mm -hmm. um, do I have an idea of how the rooms on the second floor, for uh, the first floor? Yeah, Orient? like up the landing. Yes, yeah. all pretty much, as far as you could tell, all of the rooms on that, it's not the first floor, but the first floor with rooms. Yeah is looking into the alley, S same as okay. Docs. Like, like all those ones are looking into that alley between the two buildings with Paramount and the one next to it. Okay, that's good. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'll just I'll just head back into the Paramount. We'll pivot back to the Paramount, but reversing in time a little bit here. And it's sort of as you sort of approach the front there, is there something I can help you with? You look a bit uh, amiss. M might I bathe? Of course. Just underneath the staircase, there is a door. Thank you. Hot water to be brought, or are you more of a lukewarm type? Oh, hot would be great. And and are there towels? There are. They're in there. And right now, all the baths should be clean, I believe, except for the first one on the right when you come in was just used recently. So we'll be changing out the water. All right, thank you. Of course. And Kate doesn't want to run through the lobby in a towel, so she's going to go upstairs and get a change of clothes. Sure. You can do that. Okay, and then head back down and go to the bathroom. Head inside, mm -hmm. sort of open the door, sort of peek in a little bit, and you listen, and there's a little bit of it Sounds like there's someone else in here, but there's privacy dividers between all of mm -hmm. them. And you give a quick kind of peek to your right, and it does indeed, like there's a towel kind of bunched up and on the floor, like someone has clearly used mm -hmm. that recently. And then the sloshing kind of sounds like it might be coming from maybe one of the last two on the left and right. It's hard to exactly pinpoint it, so all the others are open. Okay. I'll just walk into the nearest open one. Great. <laughs> Sink into the bath. Like you there. do. Like you do. <laughs> Let the water just, you get kind of just with your chin above the water. And it, it's, it seems like it was warm when it was initially dumped in. It's a little lukewarm at the moment, so you just kind of wait for a moment. And then after a little bit, you hear kind of a Open up. Water, someone? Oh, yes. Over here. Hmm? F. All. All. All in. <laughs> and he starts to pour it, and it comes in, and you sort of stay away from the stream of the water just so as not to get burned, but it immediately starts to mingle with the water and it feels good as a soothing kind of, you can feel your skin just kind of breathing in the warm water. Mm -hmm. And you let yourself relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. Finishes pouring. Let me know if you need more. Thank you. And then he kind of puts that down and he waddles over towards the, in the direction of the door. And it seems like he picks up another kettle mm -hmm. and then he walks past you to the mm -hmm. last row. Water? Yes, please. Thank you. 
and you hear kind of a... Do I recognize that voice? Oh. You do indeed. It sounds it like Mr. Mr. Langford, Langford there in the bath. Oh, the oh how <laughs> awkward is it to talk to him while he's in the bath? <laughs> We're ah! looking kind of... Finishes. Kenzo again sort of, need more? Let me know. Oh, Kate. <laughs> how awkward are you? Door closes. <laughs> Here, what? <laughs> Kate's gonna take a deep breath. <laughs> and you can hear sounds. He's not, you know, you're sort of sitting quietly, but it sounds like he's watching. You can hear sort of scrubbing and a little bit of splashing and stuff. Would I be able to like hear if he was like getting up and leaving? Yeah, I mean, he would make kind of a Yeah, you would be able to tell if he was Okay, there. I'm gonna wait until he, I'm not gonna talk to him through the barrier. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy my bath and wait for him to Any get thoughts going. thoughts running through Kate's mind here? She relaxes in the... Um, it's the end of the second day. <laughs> um, she's telling herself in her mind to be patient. <laughs> and that everything will happen. Be patient, Kate. <laughs> Mr. Lightburn! <laughs> <laughs> At least, the least she can do right now is be patient enough to wait until this man is clothed before speaking to him. Okay. Um, and she's gonna think a little bit about if she should write a letter back home. Um, Putting those thoughts together, what she would yeah. write if she write. Would she have to go to the mail room? Could she just give it to um, Mr. Clemens? Do they even care <laughs> that I'm here? Your understanding, I would say, of a town that's small, you've been yeah. in small towns before, there really is one courier off. If you gave it to Clemens, he would probably, he'd be willing to take it to the right, courier's right, right, office, right, but right. he wouldn't deliver it. Okay, so, yeah. So, yeah. Just questioning if, you know, the people back home even care enough to read a letter that I send them or if they would want to know what I'm up to. Um, yeah, and just waiting. Trying to breathe, trying to be patient. A little bit of patience yeah. being preached. We go back outside to a little bit around kind of the detention pass area. And it, it doesn't have all the conveniences of the main strip of town. But when you get up past the very aptly named Stubborn Bluffs here in town, there's a wonderfully peaceful path that looks down on the bustle below. And up here, there's a couple sort of interior lanterns lit in some of the dwellings here, but it's pretty dark up here. But as you look down, there's all the dotted lanterns and lights, some people carrying lanterns, torches, and the whole town kind of sp sprawls out in front of you. Some of the lantern lights reflecting off the water makes kind of a dazzling little array there. If you don't operate a business that sort of depends on foot traffic, as you suspect is the case with some of the varied homes here, the relative privacy that it provides is enviable. Mm -hmm. It's nice up here. It's quiet. Though the more Broncolo continues to expand, the less likely that that feeling will remain, sort of as it becomes a bigger and bigger city. At the end of the row of these dwellings here is a collection of structured tents that are anchored to the ground with ropes and metal pegs. Some of them quite large in size. They vary all the way from what looks like, you know, a single person tent to a larger tent that could, you know, fit a whole table inside it. It rides the line between a permanent and a temporary accommodation. Like, it's not a permanent structure, but clearly whoever's in some of these tents is here to stay for a while. The majority of the people that are moving around this area are shorter in stature. stature. Gnomes. Mm -hmm. Where even the tallest and eldest barely approach four feet tall. Past the first cluster of tents, sitting dormant and boarded up, is something that you see and something sort of a, a bit of recognition rings in your head. It's a well, a boarded up well, unremarkable in its design with a frayed forgotten rope kind of coiled around a rusty pulley system up above. And currently a pair of gnomes are seated on the edge of it and they both have kind of pipes in hand. <laughs> Just sort of enjoying the evening air. And they're laughing, smoking, streaks of dirt running down their faces that looks like maybe they were out in the mines before they, you know, settled back in for the evening. So mm -hmm. if everyone up here isn't a gnome, because you know that some people rent tents here, so you see a human, a dwarf here and there, but the majority of the people in this area are gnomes. Gotcha. Finest weed in the... A <laughs> weed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a moment and... Just look over like the downwheeled, the upwheeled, just taking this change of scenery over the last couple days. 
and really feel like I miss the ocean, <laughs> but that maybe there's some validity to the beauty of this kind of wilderness. Mm -hmm. uh, it's weird to not look out and see a harbor, a bay, yeah. an ocean. Like there's rivers, but it feels weirdly insulated yeah. here on land. Uh, taking that in for a couple minutes in my own thoughts, and I'm gonna take a couple deep breaths. And with, I mean, I, I'm confident, but with also veiled confidence of like, just checking out what's going on up here. I'm gonna make my way over to the gnomes. Sure, you head in that direction. Uh, and immediately you're sort of walking in and you get the sense that some of the gnomes know when someone's wandering in who yeah, doesn't have a tent here or something. Mm -hmm. Like already the fact that you're not a gnome is immediately stands out. But even so, even with some people who rent the tents here, some people might recognize the fact that you haven't rented a tent here. So, right. you know, they don't recognize your face. And one of the gnomes kind of leans forward after taking a drag on the pipe. You look a bit of drift, Boyle. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm actually pretty new to town here. Fleabag, a uh, couple days in. Uh, I can send you with a message or something. I can get it where it needs to go. No, actually, I'm just checking out the town. And uh, I, I do know someone who lives up here, Mr. Morton, and he said that there were gnome tents and a place for people to live up here. And so I thought I'd give it a look. Mr. Morton rents a tent here, right? Yeah. I don't think he's in at the moment. Ah, it's okay. I'm not here to see Nile. Um, I, it's just looking at this bluff. It seems nice. It's a nice view over everything. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, my name's Ilian, by the way. Cobb. Cobb. It's nice to meet you. You looking uh, to rent? Uh, maybe. Uh, right now I'm at the Paramount. I guess it depends how my next week or two go. See if I can afford to do that or if I'd rather move out into more of a wilderness. Maybe that's... Maybe it's not about money at all. Maybe it'd just be a nice change of pace to move out of a hotel. I don't know. You talk a lot, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I do talk a lot. Uh, I do. Um, this boarded up section, is this like to be built for something? Uh, like a hotel being built up here? Or another living space for people up here? One of the other, this gnome that's sitting next to the man you're talking to kind of leans in. Mm. Clinker, I told you, you can spot them a mile away. <laughs> Following up on that murder, are you? Murder? Uh, Thought that trail went cold. Well, like I said, I'm Fleabag, and it's my second night in town. Uh, would you, you say so? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, really, I'm not trying to pull your leg here. Um, Make a persuasion check. <laughs> you get the sense also, I will say, even without an inside check, you get the sense that based on the sort of the clinker comment and stuff and what you heard, that whatever took place with this well here, that they really grilled the gnomes that immediately uh, like, they're like, here we go again. Someone here uh, to ask about the well. So like immediately, they're not defensive, but clearly they're, there's a little kind of, annoyed sigh, just I in see. the sense that they they think you're here to kind of go over the same shit over again. Just curious. Well, it was a seven. Seven. <clears throat> you can have a C for yourself. I don't know if I want to step into a place there. A murder happened. Well, uh, are there mean into it. <laughs> is there, should I be aware, are there murderers running around up here or? No. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, uh, in that case, mm, Sure, I mean, I was only wondering about this place. I'll take a closer look. Sure, I'll, I'll step There's in closer. Word scrawled on the well that they found scrawled on a body elsewhere. Thought the two were connected. Thought maybe someone here at the gnome tents had something to do with the murder. Well, did they? No, of course not. <laughs> Just wondering. Uh, so a culprit hasn't been found? No. All right, I'll take a couple steps closer and sure. Take Give me an investigation check. Oh god, you're gonna get pushed. <clears throat> I mean, it's boarded up, right? It's not it's yes, the, the, yeah, yeah. the top is boarded up. <laughs> Just push like, harder. Uh, okay, don't push <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> 17. Slow so center of gravity. <laughs> As you just take a slow circle around the well, and the two of them, like, <laughs> watch you do so as you serve your way around. The well is constructed, and gnome craftsmanship is very good, and you can see that the gnome was, was built to last. 
but as you're kind of walking around it, you can see a little bit of paint on one side of the well, kind of one wall of the well there. And you see the word Yarpaya scrawled across. And in addition to that, as you take, you kind of squat down and take a closer look, the paint has not faded or eroded one bit. There may well be something maybe even like magical about it. Like there are magic paints that hold up very strongly over time. And it, there could be something, it could be more, in fact, it would be surprising if there wasn't more to it than just regular paint, because that would have, you know, at least started yeah. to fade or wash or something to that. Wow. So you said there was a scuffle with clinkers uh, and that, that trail had run cold. Well, clinker wound up dead. And then the others came asking around here. You Tensions see. were high for a while. I see. And this word, this Yarpaya, uh, you said it was connected. There was a murder here, or is this the body you're talking about? The body was found elsewhere. I see. Um, it means how, nothing to nobody that I spoke to. How long ago was this? A couple of months ago. I see. And d does it not strike you, just looking at these boards, uh, this, this word does not seem weathered at all. It's, it, this word, Yarpaya, just looks as better than the boards that are around it. Hmm. I just know, I noted that as being weird. I don't know if that means something to you guys. Anyways, I don't know why I'm even asking this. Uh, just came to take a look at the tents, did you? Uh. I, I, I was just wondering if this was some boarded up for some reason. Um, Plenty of people, different backgrounds, have had a look at it. No language that we know. Of. Could be a name or a place. Your guess is as good as ours. I mean, if I find anything out, I'll come right back to you guys. Uh, so if I'm looking to build anything out here, this is not up for sale or anything like that. You could purchase a lot if you were looking to. Like, like this well, I could build something by it or a different lot? You want to buy the area around the well? I'm just thinking about it. There'd be an old well in the middle of your living room. Well, I'll probably build around it a little bit better than that, but that could be kind of cool. A well in the living room, access to water. It could be kind of nice. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, Cobb, right? Aye. Well, if I hear more about this clinker business, although you say that it's run cold or this word, I will come talk to you, but uh, thank you for letting me take a look around. Um, just if I did want to get a tent up here at some point, how much is that? You'd have to come back in the morning. I don't rent the tents. Oh, I see. Um, I have to speak to Trudy. Trudy Thornycroft. Trudy Thornycroft, okay. Okay, yeah, if I look for that, I'll look for Trudy. Um, you seem awfully the curious type. I am. I'd warn you against going down there. Going down into the well. Is that where the murderers are? No. <laughs> well, then what danger would there be for someone to sp head down there? Opened up into a cavern. I see. Wasn't useful as a well. I see. We thought we were going to hit groundwater, but nope. Opened up into a series of caves. Hmm. As if one of the diggers was rooting around, said he saw some big spiders down there. Spiders. Came, came right back up. Yikes, okay. Well, thank you for the warning. Uh, Just if you buy the lot. Yeah. Don't no, go down the well. Uh, perhaps it's not a good place to build on top of a home of spiders. Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you, Cobb. All right, alien. Have a good night. Have a good night. I'm gonna head just down and do the round that I said I was going to. Head back around the opposite way, and you work your way sort of into Detention Pass and then back into Broncolo proper. That is where we're going to take a little oh. break if we hit the halfway mark. Ba -do -do. <laughs> what were you up to, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> just a long 30-minute lusty little... Yeah, thing. lusty Ooh. looks and... Just big old lust vibe. Ooh, wow. <laughs> just to stare <laughs> off with Micah yeah. for 20 minutes. Probably not even going to make it to YouTube. Oh, yeah. Sexy. Yeah. Redacted. <laughs> Nitty gritty campaign. <laughs> some poking around and some mysteries abound here as we uh, are maybe wondering what's in the well and what Maeve's up to at her Damn. place. 
and whether Kate might address Mr. Langford, and that's what oh. we're gonna pick it up when we get Mr. Langford. back. Mr. Langford. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Langford. Oh. Oh, no. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I hope you're feeling at ease. Mr. <laughs> Um, that's where we're gonna pick it back up. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, the usual stuff, uh, break video, fun and games, Broncolo Powerball, put your guesses yeah. in. If you're watching on TikTok, we're just gonna go offline for about 15 minutes and then come on back. If you follow us, you'll probably get a notification that we're live again. We're oh, yeah. just gonna take a quick breaky Reno. All right, everybody, Reno. we'll see you on the other side. Uh, here we go. Penetrating uh... Stop decisions. it. <laughs> Absolutely stop. <laughs> you asked me. Poco uh, Doka says, sounds wunderbar. Wunderbar! wunderbar. Darn yes, it. Everyone's saying nice things about Let's my hat. You don't have to go comprehensively feats you're considering? Do you want to shout some out that you're just considering? Uh, do people want to know what was on yes. the... Uh, oh, I yes! Oh, yes! Pascal? Oh, oh, yeah. Come oh, on, yeah. please. You... Yeah, where's your hat, bitch? I got a big head, too. And that one stuffed on my dome. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Oh. <laughs> there was a moment in the baths where I was like, <laughs> thinking about like TC puts his head back and just. <laughs> uh. Oh, okay. Can, there's a question about the solo session that's very much revealing what it is. Can I ask it? I mean, people are gonna watch yes. this. Gonna gonna watch watch it. It. Oh, I'm gonna watch it. Bang, 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 bang. If the Gorianon comes a walking into town. I actually, I don't want to say anything about that. <gasps> just for now. I fucking. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're thrilled that you all are here supporting us. We love you all very much. We will see you next week. And we Dive back in. Hey, everybody, welcome back Whoa. to Tabletop Notch at Broncolo, oh, Chapter Twelve. Ilian took a little detour to the gnome nook to uh, see detour. maybe <laughs> to see what the well was all about. Got a little bit of information there about what's contained within, and uh, the gnomes filled him in. But before we dive back in all the way, uh, is anything to? No, just more of these stream streaks, and I, I, oh, they're part of our lives now. Uh, X Look Back had a five stream streak. Finny Can had a seven stream streak. Jay Bleezy resubscribed, was running, gift us, uh, gifted us a uh, Vexalon, did a thousand bits. Thank you. Thanks. GF Powers, a hundred bits. Spacebar, subscribe with Prime. Thank you. Ooh, Ali Slayer Prime. did a hundred bits. Uh, Frank and Carr resubscribed. Ali Slayer, another hundred bits. Dave the One gave up five community subs. Oh, thank you very, very much. Ali Slayer gifted us a uh, Mahi Mahi Boxer, gifted us a uh, Murgul subscribed. Mahi Mahi Boxer gave out uh, one, two, three more subs. Wisdom Kid subscribed. Mahi Boxer gave out two. Two more subs. Whoa. Louis Sau uh, resubscribe uh, re Prime. Jay Brownie, a thousand bits. Mayu Magi, another one. Oh, uh, oh, crazy, right. th uh, crazy Thadley, a thousand fifty bits, and then the two community subs, and then Mahi, uh, Mahi Boxer gifted another sub. Thank you guys. Cheers. Yeah, was, uh, also, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you to the people who signed up for my Patreon and subscribed oh! to my YouTube channel in the last hour. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys. That's really nice. Um, thank you all so much for the support. In addition, um, I'll just say this again: uh, if you were gifted a sub and you didn't have one before, Notch and Sodas after the stream. Yeah, we'll talk about subs correct. only, and now you have access to oh it. So, um, That's so exciting. Sodas asking, and it usually lasts for about an hour. Yeah, just so. Yeah, yeah we kind of shoot there's the no, shit until we. No, there's, there's no harm. Yeah, but if you need to go to sleep, go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, you'll find it somewhere else. I might go to sleep during it. <laughs> it's possible. Sleep you never know what he'll say when he's sleeping. Okay. <laughs> as we, as uh, Kate waits to see whether uh, Mr. Langford is finishing up with his bath, we are going to follow TC first as he returns to Paramount Lodgings, having unsuccessfully determined either what kind of Maeve was up to or whether she was able to provide his alchemist's fire that he ordered earlier in the day. So it's kind of a, a longer walk back as TC just sort of <laughs> racking his brain, contemplating what could have happened. You know, it has been hasn't been that long since you last saw her. So just a little bit of confusion, thoughts running through your head. As you return to the area where the open market was, they've more or less finished the little circle of rocks. A lot of kindling is being tossed into the center. You see people coming kind of out now and putting stools down. They've got blankets wrapped around them to just oh. kind of sit out here. The bonfire is not lit yet, but it looks like they're that's coming up soon. So that's what you see as you approach. Do I see, do I see any clinkers? 
if there are, they're not wearing their uniforms. Okay. Definitely no clinker jackets like gray and green jackets. And maybe anyone from the fight in the at the music box, like a Woody or a... Uh, give me a perception check. Okay. <laughs> uh, nine. Nine. Uh, nobody that was sort of none of the patrons, but you do see Vincent mm. sort of, he's not helping with the bonfire sort of creation. He's There's two other guys that are kind of talking to him and he's kind of having a, not an intense conversation, but he, like you have a number of times, seems to be relaying the what happened, the events at the music box to a couple other people. And you feel like maybe the people he's talking to it's not like Delia or someone you know by name, but people from Excavation on Demand, like Bison's okay. people that he's relaying this information to. People that you've seen around EOD. Maybe I'll I'll kind of slowly approach, you know, not trying to interrupt or, or sure. yeah, but yeah. I'll, I'll kind of head in that As he's just kind of talking to the people in front of him, he catches your sort of approach. And, this is one of them. Yeah. Um, I've already forgotten your name if you gave it to me. TC. TC. Vincent, I think I said. Um, shot down the preacher from the balcony and the guys that are sort of standing with him. I'll give like a comic little like. <laughs> uh, better that than finding out whatever the fuck he was up to. I think he succeeded on most of what he was up to. Do you think there was a step two? <laughs> I don't know. You never know what these people are up to. Anything you find on him? I didn't have time to get a closer look before they tossed him in the river. No, oh, just his clasps and somebody said that there was drow poisoning, lining. Yeah, Doc gave me the, the details. Right. No. It's how he kept the, he's saying this to the other people, it's how he kept the snakes in his jacket without getting bit. And the guys kind of sort of react to that. Just the, you see it, just the, the planning that it took. Like this was no like spur of the moment decision. Like the, he had to poison each snake with drow poison and then fit it into the jacket. Like this was so meticulously planned. He probably had it on the ride. Like probably. I mean, the snakes were somewhere. He probably didn't gather them here in Brunk Hollow. So either they were in a case, maybe, yeah. you know, unconscious in a suitcase somewhere. So something, yes. And they were all the same exact kind of snake. Yeah. So that was, it's not like if you just wandered out in the down right. road, you could rustle up, oh you know, 15 God. snakes, so. Bog truly boggles the mind, the links that someone would go to just to, I don't know, scare us, preach to us, save us. Yeah. I don't know. I told you you'd drink for free tonight. You didn't come back in, but tomorrow night, drink's free too. Ah, thank you kindly. Uh, you already closed up for the night. No, no, we're still going. I just had a couple people that wanted to get the details. Of course. I Forgive you, I may call it an early night and visit you tomorrow. No problem. Good night, sir. Good night. Well, my way. Make your way back into uh, Paramount Lodgings. Mm -hmm. Were you waiting at the booth still? You were staying there? So I want to go to, if I'm not in like one of the booths where the door closes, I'd like to... You you guys had picked out a booth. They don't have doors. They have like a curtain that was pulled. Oh, I'd like to pull the curtain so that if any of my companions besides TC wander out, they don't see me just chilling. Sure, as soon so as. So I'd like to keep, sort of close the curtain so it looks like it's occupied, mm -hmm. but keep an eye on the door to see TC. You can definitely all. do that. As soon as, I, I think the last <laughs> person to leave was Kate. Kate. So as soon as she got up to leave, you sort of looked around, waited for her, and then just sort of pulled the curtain. And TC, you come back in, and you just sort of peek every once in a while, every couple of minutes, you just kind of peek out. <laughs> And then at one point you peek and you see TC approaching there through the. Is it? It's still Clemens at the. At it the is front? currently still Clemens at the front. All right. So if I see her, I'll I'll go over there. Uh, give me a perception check. Mm. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Just as you're passing by Clemens, he's not speaking to you, but you can see him. First of all, he's sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a typical, uh, is this typical? Uh, he sort of, he was uh, sort of not expecting someone to sort of speak to him and, I'm sorry, I was quite in my own thoughts. No, I, you mentioned before that uh, your other half would have typically taken his post by now. Yes, I am hoping that he returns in the next hour or so. I am quite exhausted from the day. 
You're not worried about his safety, are you? Just, uh... No, just no, I'm quite certain I know where he is. <laughs> Can I help you send for him or anything like that? I'll give it a little while and maybe I'll take you up on that. Right. I try not to get others involved lest Mr. Warren think that I am being antagonistic. Quite all right. A tenuous business relationship. I don't know if you've ever had a similar experience. Mm. Sounds terrible. It could be better. Well, I do hope that you get some rest soon. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Mr. Welty. I'll make my way over to... A knock knock. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you. Come on in. Thank you. So. Was your trip successful? No. Oh. <laughs> no, unfortunately. Maeve is struggling with some inner demons, it would seem. Oh. I don't know whether she typically stays open this late or not, but I overheard her admonishing either an unseen partner or herself, and she wouldn't come to the door, despite me asking for what was promised to me. <laughs> That's, that sounds tough. It does. <laughs> I offered my help as well, but she, she stayed silent. Perhaps she was really talking to, to somebody and too quiet there. Perhaps she was really <laughs> talking to somebody. Uh, Maybe. Uh, as soon as I made clear that I was there, she, complete silence. So okay. I imagine she didn't want to be overheard or spoken to. In any case, <laughs> not that it would have been a great <laughs> idea, but I thought in a real pinch we could have used the alchemist fire as some kind of a distraction, but oh. that would have been Worst case scenario, I believe. Yes, I would really like to avoid that. Yes, uh, of course, of course. So, we're not in danger of being overheard here, yeah? No, I mean, yeah, you, <laughs> you can speak quietly well, yeah, this And, is and quiet. there's still people in the kitchen, so there's other conversations to mask the, your conversation. Well, okay, um, Mr. Welker, I, yes. before I asked you what the gnome blood was for and you did not tell me, and I just, I'm t I'm willing to help, but Morning. if it is used for a potion that might disguise someone, that would sort of go against my whole thing. So, um, t what is it for, if, if you know? I told you, did I not, that whomever it is that I am doing this for, I want to be able to speak to them first about who I might have brought in on this job, and that is why I'm not naming them. And that is fine, but if I am helping you with this, <laughs> and it is for, for instance, a potion that disguises oneself, and I am looking for someone who I believe has been disguising himself, you see my, you see where I'm, I do. you see that? I So if you know what it's for, then it could be cool to tell me maybe. <laughs> I don't wish to pry. My understanding is... <laughs> okay. My understanding... is that it is resistant to magic. And that it might have the opposite effect. That if someone were disguising themselves, this might make them plain. Or be some kind of a protection against things like that. She's gonna um, take a big drink. Cool. <laughs> Morna. Yeah. I have promised three full vials of this. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Maybe. Unless you have some way of holding onto it yourself. <laughs> I don't know how much blood a gnome carries in him. <laughs> but I plan to deliver three full syringes. I completely understand that sounds cool. Uh, what do you want to do first? Oh, well. <laughs> Both of you give me perception checks. Oh, let's go. Oh, Morna gonna steal that blood. 17. 17. Oh, for fuck's sake. Deirdre. 
I can't, I can't, I can't really oh, do too bad with perception, honestly. Sake, it's a six. Six. Morna, a little sort of inner thoughts about the information she's just received, but TC, uh, sort of where you're seated and also given the conversation you just had, gives you a little bit of sort of keeping it in the back of your mind. You hear what sounds like a conversation happening near the front. Mm -hmm. And so you hear oh, the voice of lean. Mr. Clemens, yeah, as you kind of lean out. Mr. Warren, you are quite a bit late. So sorry, I am here now. And I'll roll in with that perception check. He's slurring his words a little bit. Like, <laughs> I'm quite ready to take my post. Oh, oh, so I, I relieve you oh. now. Oh. Mr. Clemens, are you everything. quite indisposed in this moment? Uh, no, no, of course not. Uh, the night shift is always quiet. Very well. Dare I ask if you did well at the tables, Mr. Warren? <laughs> you know, a day like any other. Uh, go, go get your rest. Uh, Mr. Clay, I'll take over. Very well. I know what's in the till. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> oh no. It's a conversation that you wrap. Yikes. Mona. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, a spot of good news. Yes. I don't know if you heard much of that conversation, but Mr. Warren is back. Oh. And he is slurring his words. <laughs> You peek one more time out from the curtain and Mr. Warren's standing at the desk now and he's sort of, just sort of like a glazed expression. Someone comes in through the front door. <laughs> I think this might be a number of opportunities for us, not only being able to get upstairs without being seen, yes. but perhaps after that, ingratiating ourselves to Mr. Clements. Very well. By either Admonishing him or or, or um, alerting him to whatever. Yes. If, if he's asleep. Ah. Do you see what I mean? I do indeed. <laughs> yeah. uh, let us move quickly. If there is no one. I say we wait a little longer. Very well. Because we want to see whether he will slip into a, a light slumber. This is a very good idea. Now, <laughs> I think with my tools. I should be able to get my way into the door. And that might be a little better than making the way up in the into the window from the alley. I uh, defer to you, sir. All right. Thank you for telling me about the task. I understand that openness in this is Find trust is, is good, yes. Yes, thank you. Ah. TC, trusty chap, that's what they call me. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> what, what, gonna, what are, yeah, you, like, are you waiting? Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, let's just. Keep an eye. Keep an eye yes. for right now and see how I long I will say, you wait a little bit and he is, he's not like totally nodding off. A couple times he does seem just a little disoriented, but also, it's not so late in the night that people aren't still coming through the door. So right. each time someone comes through or exits from the kitchen, he's mm -hmm. sort of, <clears throat> good night. So, he, you know, it's keeping him awake. It doesn't yeah. seem like he's imminently going to fall asleep anytime uh, too soon. All right, rather than wait for a full slumber, I think he is distracted enough that were I to go up those stairs and you simply walk up to him and say hello, I will have an opportunity to slip in a direction that I, would be recognized as not being mine. Oh, of course. You understand? And how, how am I gonna slip up? <laughs> you go up, and then you go to the ride. Okay. And then you wait until someone else gets his attention. Ah, great. All right? Okay, but you're not gonna go in without me. No, 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 I simply, I simply will can I tell if he's telling me? <laughs> <laughs> give me an insight check. And give me a either deception or persuasion, depending on uh, whether you think you're lying. You don't have to say okay. it out loud. Okay. <laughs> um, um, come on. Son of a bitch. No. What's a 10? D. It's more than that. <laughs> um, I will. 
I will have my way with that door. If need be, I will slip inside just enough to close the door, and I will not... Bar me from it. I will not bar... Oh, uh, certainly not. I will not bar you from it. If anything, I will obscure myself only. Very, very good. All right. Okay. Go, team. Yes. Guys are lucky you're behind a curtain. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Morna is like vibrating. She's so like, oh, I don't want to it in my room. Okay, great. Uh, take my time. No, I won't take my time. No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out and confidently walk over to Mr. Warren. Okay, I'm, I'm going. What is happening? Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I had a question for you. Mm. Do you know anything? Good night. Mr. Welker. Uh, do you have any uh, interest in making this wooden structure stone? I just think a, 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 a lodging of this sort, think of the grandeur and longevity if there was more stone involved. Of y course, you yes. have the Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, how would how would you do that? <laughs> there are many ways. You would it would involve scaffolding. Oh, I, I see that I am. Do I feel like I've given him enough time? It's a little bit as you're sort of going into the details more so than when Bucking he was just standing by himself. He sort of yes. <laughs> I give me a um, just give me a straight charisma check with advantage. Oh, charisma oh. Check with advantage. Oh, bore him Come to sleep. That's good because I don't got a lot of courage. No, you're so cute. Oh my god. Uh, so that's uh, 11. 11? Okay, okay. Here a little bit of a distraction there. TC, you creep up the stairs and you like move to the right because you know that's where your rooms are and you give mm -hmm. a quick look over your shoulder and you see the sort of disoriented conversation that uh, Mr. Warren is having with Morna and then you quickly pivot to the left there. As soon as you get a little further, you sort of move out of the sight line. So from the front desk, he can see the staircase right. and then maybe like one door there. But he, as soon as you go off to the left, he can no longer see you. Mm -hmm. As TC slips in that direction, you can see Mr. Warren sort of, uh, sort of look up, trying to look past you a little bit. So you would have, oh my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I didn't bonk it. I didn't. You, you guys didn't even see me bonk it. Check it's not true. Automatically fail. Oh, <laughs> funny. Shit. Oh, no. You're fine. Fair, fair. What were you doing? I, I'm, I just sort of make. You, you need scaffolding. <laughs> um, and, and then you would need to. Uh, you'd need to have it. So making yourself bigger, mm -hmm. uh, you'd need to have it. Give me a performance out. check with oh, advantage. Yes. <clears throat> with advantage. Mm -hmm. Come on, yes. this, this is the role. Go, go, go. This yes. is it. Talk this to him about Rob. You guys are so good. Um, that's, uh, performance is a minus, uh, that's a 15. 15. Yeah. Let's go. As you sort of, the, the motions are a little unnatural. They're very sudden. You're like, you need all this. <laughs> and he's sort of a little taken aback by it, but also a little wrapped by it. He's like, yes, I do need that. So you can see, like, there's a little compounding interest in what you're telling him. <laughs> During that time. <laughs> During that time, TC, you get over to the door there. Door is sort of number two, I think you said it was. Immediately, uh, the first thing is to very quickly put my ear to the door and really try to focus and see if I hear anything. Okay, give me a perception check. Oh, that's two dice. I'm not going to look at either. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, uh, perception? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, 11. 11. As far as you can tell, it is silent. However, there is both... Mr. Warren and Morna and the noise of the kitchen. Yeah. It's a little difficult to tell because right. you're not so far away that the noise. As long as I'm not hearing any major thumps and bumps or talking, I'm immediately down on the ground, open it up, get the tools, and very quietly working. TC, with a practiced expertise in his movements, whips out the, it, you have it on a little thing on your belt and as you unroll it, it's still attached to your belt. So you have it like down your leg a little bit and you slide out a couple of the little pieces of metal tools and you start to work at it. 
Um, go ahead and give me a thieves tools check. Oh, is, is that a, a sleight of hand? It's not a sleight of hand. Uh, it's dexterity plus proficiency. Whoa, snap! It's really? its own check. I think. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's technically its own check. Uh, uh, thieves tools. Oh yeah, it doesn't have it on the uh, on at least on D&D Beyond's little description of it. Yeah. Well. Um, what good is it? <laughs> These tools. Uh, proficiency with these tools, which you have, lets you add your proficiency bonus to any ability checks you make to disarm traps or open locks. So it's just a dexterity check plus your proficiency for the thieves' tools. Okay. I wish it was a fan. All right, so dexterity plus proficiency. Mm-hmm. And with the faintest of click, the lock yields, and the door... Quickly, with the tools, back away. Just in that exact moment, you can also hear someone coming up the stairs. Stand up straight. That's sort of... And very just casually, like, open the door. Sure. As he gets to the top of the stairs, Matt starts to go up another level. It's not someone you recognize. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't recognize nope. him. Some other patron of the All hotel right. yep. you do not recognize. Him. Nice. Son of a bitch. You slip inside before, Scene. before, <laughs> before any kind of yeah. uh, Morna, what do you... You feel like you've given enough time, so... Yeah, you could use something like granite because it would be cheaper, but it is a fire. If, if it heats, I see that I am boring you. No, I will come no. back in the morning. I like everything you're saying. I, I think uh, better directed at Mr. Clements. Ah. Uh, majority owner as he is oh. in the hotel. But I will forward your suggestion. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it very much. Have a great night. Uh, you as well. And I will go up the stairs. Mm-hmm. She's like breathing kind of hard. She's like, oh, that was hard. And... Um, <laughs> Goes back to his kind of goes up there. the stairs. She's gonna go. He kind of watches you go up the stairs. Usual way, mm-hmm. seeing that she's a duck around the corner. You go back around the corner and wait to see if there's somebody like tucked around the corners, uh, going the right way. Wait to see if somebody comes up to the desk or if at least he's distracted. Okay, give me a perception check. Okay. And if she can look that way, she see I'm not there. Already. Yes, he's already, I'm, in yeah. already in the room. Yeah, already in the room. Yeah, you don't see him. Fire. No, I'm not. Got this. Yeah. Got, got, got it. Got it. <gasps> 19. <laughs> 19. As you slip around the corner, you just get nice and low and get your ear to the edge as much as possible. You wait for a little bit of the din, and then you just hear, Oh, welcome back, okay. Mr. Walking <laughs> <laughs> right across. Yeah. Yeah. Right across. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You dart across there. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Bing Bong Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hong Kong. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Hong Kong oh, at the God. Paramount. Yes, right across. Um, and I'm going to quietly as possible check the door. Do you bar it in any way? You son of a bitch. No, of course not. No, 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 no. Pushes the door open, swings right. open freely. TC's just standing there like... And I'll <laughs> close the door behind me. You get inside. <laughs> and revealed before you is a room virtually identical to your own. Especially in the sense that it doesn't appear very lived in. For someone who's supposedly been in town for a week or more, You might expect more personal effects strewn about, or indications of their presence. But other than an unmade bed and a desk chair that isn't pushed in, there aren't a lot of signs of occupancy. The air in here is very stale, Mm -hmm. even more so than you'd expect from a room neglected. And TC, you were the first one in. You noticed as you entered, you glanced down at your feet, and there's a rolled up dirty towel that looks like it was used to clog the small gap under, at the bottom of the door. Yeah. A sconce on the left side wall has only the dregs left of what was once a candle, a lumpy pool of wax collected in the metal dish below it and even dripping down a little bit off the floor. It's not currently dripping, but it looks like there's drips of wax on the floor as if someone left in haste and forgot to put the candle out. You look around the room and just as yours, bed, desk, window, the usual effects. 
And other than the rolled up towel and stuff, you might need to poke around a little bit. The bed is made? No, it's unmade. It looks unmade. It's rumpled. As rumpled, yeah. but nothing. Few, no big bumps or no. anything. I'm going to um, move the towel back to the door so that it blocks any view of our little feet. Sure. <laughs> and, um, and it was, again, like, in such a way that when I opened the door, it moved it with slid. it. It yes, there. it was yeah. there. Okay. And the room is not like 60 feet big, is it? It's probably like as big as this room okay. right here. Yep, I'd it's like not to big. see if I notice anything that has any, if I notice anything. Sure, give me an investigation check. Are you poking around? Give me an no. But I'd like check. to make it uh, notice anything that's magical. Uh, okay, you can do that. <laughs> um, and I'd also like to investigate as well. Yes, yes. Uh, both yeah. of you yeah. give me we'll investigation checks. Yeah. I'll goes. just be like, times of the essence mm-hmm. as I. <laughs> Oh, D. Don't worry. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's 10. 22. 22. As TC immediately sort of Ooh. physically starts to poke around, sort of lifts up the sheet, kind of looks under the bed, under the bed yeah. you sort of listen and you're expecting to hear Morna sort of rifling through stuff as well. She doesn't right away. She sort of and takes a deep breath <laughs> and then starts to move forward and kind of look around. You pick up no sense at all in this room of anything magical. As you poke around, you find a couple things. On the desk itself, which Morna walked over to, there are some very small torn sheets of a very fine paper made of flax, perhaps, or some kind of plant fiber. It's not meant for writing on. It doesn't look like it's like a parchment paper. And if you run your finger along the wood of the desk, you pick up your hand, and there's a very fine navy powder that quickly turns to a lighter blue when it touches your skin. It like stains your fingertips, almost as if you'd pressed them into ink. TC, as you're looking around, you go to the bed, and there's storage under the bed as there was in your room. There's like drawers under the bed. So you open one drawer, there's like a spare blanket in there. You pick it up, put it down, nothing there. Close that drawer. You open another drawer. And there's a piece of parchment paper left behind, so very much different from the paper on the desk. And it has a, a kind of a perforated edge, as if it was kind of torn from a journal or something. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> And as you're over at the desk as well, you pull open the drawers of the desk. Yeah. And in one drawer of the desk, you find two jars of honey. One of them only half full. (laughs) So some partially eaten jar and then the other one kind of sealed. Okay. As if not opened. Okay. I'll, I very quickly read it and more now. something you expected? No. Let's keep looking. Can I keep it? That's up to you. <laughs> Are you asking to see? <laughs> uh, no. It's your job. It's bolted asking. to the floor. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. If, She's going to fold it up and keep it. Uh, if I see you fold it up and start, I wonder if leaving things as we found them might be the best course. It's up to you. Very well. Truly, yes. take a moment. She will. She's gonna take it and sort of. You can also <laughs> study it. You can also keep that and say right. that you put it back. Like Great. just so okay, you, so you remember what it said. Morna would make sure you remember. What it said. Yeah, she's gonna fucking remember that. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, Let's keep looking. Okay. Great. Oh my god. Oh. Around. Those are the only That's things you it. find: uh, the fine powder and the papers on the desk, a couple jars of honey. A piece of torn, sort of side ripped parchment that was under the bed. Did I notice the blue? Uh... Do you point it out to him? Uh, yeah, I'll say, yeah, come over sure? here. And you run, again, you run your finger along, you pick up, and that, because you've been there and Morna has not, that fine blue and combined with the rolling papers could indeed be the same kind of thing that Maeve has been smoking in her sort of. Uh... I believe that this is uh, some kind of a. Pipe weed or something, something smoked. Oh. Maeve was had a blue smoke coming out of her back window. I see. That gives much the air of this. 
dulls the senses? Somewhat. Okay, and there's no, there's no clothing. There's no. Mm, okay. I, I get the idea that he slipped out the window the last time he left here. Can we look out the window and see if there's any like, sh like? You can look yeah. at the window. Take a look at the, you know, along the edges and. It. It is closed when you're in there. However, as you move over to it, the windows have locks on them, and the window is not locked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I, call that. <laughs> I thought for a second you were gonna be like, "Oh, yeah, oh, well, that makes yeah. sense." <laughs> <laughs> it would seem. Or, um, I'm gonna quietly open it, and you can look out. It's yeah. the alley between the two, but the building next door. Does it seem like you could kind of? step out, is there like a ledge that you could get on to then close the window before you maybe jump down? There's enough sticking out that you could like hang and pull it. I mean, okay. it looks like it would take a little bit of an acrobatic feat, but certainly not impossible, yeah. It seems doable. I wonder if we should do the same so that that, that towel by the window remains. Yes, that is a very good idea. Are you comfortable jumping from this height? I could catch you. Uh, yeah. I'll go first. Great. Are you sure you're done up here? T totally. <laughs> yep. You were hoping for more. Yep. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Do you want to describe him to me? That if I see him, I can report back to you. Please, yes. Um, and, and I describe him. He's... You have blonde, the description. Do you remember it? Or a blonde you... human human man, scruffy beard, uh, missing a finger, a pinky finger on his left hand. Missing pinky left hand. Blonde. Into alchemy. Got it. All right. Um, the window still open. I take it. You know, case it for a minute. See if there's. There's nobody walking through. Through. You can, If you look out to the left, yeah. the thoroughfare is there, and you can hear people, but it's, it's at least 15, 20 feet it's that far way. enough, and it's getting a little dark. Yeah, and there's no one in the alley, yeah. as far as you can tell. What, so. What's the ground out there? Is it dirt? It's dirt, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not going to abandon me down there, are you? You're not going to stay up here? Of course not. All right. Are you going to climb down or jump down? Forgive me, before we... The smell. Yes. Is it anything about it? It is quite stale. I'm gonna go, over the, perception. go over to the bed, and uh, yeah, I would just sure. Yeah. As you go over to the bed, go ahead. Perception. Yeah. And what were you saying? Oh, just big sniffs. <laughs> 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 12 percent. 12. As you get closer to the bed, honestly, it it actually lessens. And then you walk back in the direction of the desk. It's possible you're picking up on the staleness of what was smoked. Powder. Yes, the powder. Oh, okay. Yes, like that's adding to the staleness of the room. Okay. It might just be the have been the powder. Are there fitted sheets on the bed? Uh, it, it's it's not fitted, but there is a base sheet that has mm -hmm. been folded over it. Yes. Go back over to the bed. And just give a give a quick like. And are there any other drawers that are left on? Like, I want to open every single yeah, drawer. Yeah, I mean, you, you yeah. open all the ones under the bed, open all the ones at the desk. Yeah. That's it. Just <sighs> trying to be thorough. Yeah. Try to put things back kind of as I saw them. Sure. Yes. Is there anything you're taking from here, just so I know? The letter under the bed, jars of honey, she's gonna the go powder. Back. Uh, she's going to go back and take the letter. Okay. Yeah. Do I see that? Oh. I mean, it's room small, yes. Yeah. There's, there's... Morna. I must. You don't think it'll come back to haunt you? Probably. <laughs> it will not come back to haunt you, sir. I'm gonna go back to where I, at my, uh... Is fingerprinting a thing? No! <laughs> 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 like, you can go no. over and, like, rub down all the nails. <laughs> fingerprinting only in the sense, like, if there was powder on the desk, like, honestly, yeah. like, there's some streaks now where you guys ran your finger along the desk. Yeah. But in terms, like, fingerprinting, no. But okay. like evidence of touching things. Somebody touching. If it was, if it was something was dusty or something, yeah. All right, all right. Um. All right. 
That's it. All right. Don't say I didn't warn you. And I'm going to go to the window. Very slowly, carefully, one leg out. Give me uh, an acrobatics or an athletics check. Seventeen. Seventeen. You watch TC sort of flip himself, and he grabs onto the sill on the opposite side, so you can see him kind of face to face there. Wait, wait. (laughs) Oh my god, dude! I'm sorry. Where's my window from here? It's like around the building, yeah? It's several windows down. Yeah. I couldn't shimmy to there, could I? So there's a there's no there isn't one long ledge. Yeah. There's a ledge where each window is. So you would have to oh, grab yeah. ledge Let's to ledge. Do it for view eight. Do it. Do it. Do it. Are you fucking Go. kidding me? There's try people it. in those windows. Roll they might be right there. Go for it. Yeah, they might. You be. can do it. I have to get my shovel. Oh shit. Um. Do you want me to go get your shovel? <laughs> You're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I yeah. I'll stop. I'll stop. Yeah. You can hang there. There's a shovel in my room. Yes. I wonder. <laughs> Give me your key. I can get it. No, oh. We still, we, we, no, you still have to leave the, the tower. I will wait until he is distracted. And then come back into the room. No, I will leave this room, go up and to yours, and it will look as if I come down from your room, my room. We are next to each other. Yes. That is not How does that help me? I will have the shovel with me. <laughs> You'll or still have to I come back have... through this room to replace the towel. What? Oh, fuck me, yes. That's why we're going out this window. Oh, <laughs> oh fuck, yes. I'll see ya. <laughs> I, 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 we'll load that with the acrobatics. Okay, okay. You're able to, you hit the ground, and there's a little bit of a stagger there, but you safely land. It's not up that high. It's <laughs> DC. Okay, uh, great. I'm gonna just a helping hand. Climb out, out out the window and attempt to. Athletics or acrobatics, whichever you prefer. Okay. Yeah, don't forget to close the window. Hold on, I'm gonna do a different dice. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. I mean, it's just easy. Oh, that is a. Uh, ooh, that's an 18. 18, excellent. Nice. As you kind of get me. flip on the opposite side, you grab onto the sill, and it's a little smaller than you thought. You have to kind of grip it tightly. <laughs> And then you, nice, nice. And then let yourself fall. <laughs> and it, you don't really need TC to catch you, but he steadies you. You kind of yeah. hit the ground, and he just sort of keeps you. From... <laughs> Thank you. Well done. All right. Yes. How are we gonna get the shovel? I, I, did he not seem drunk enough that we could literally say, "What are you talking about"? <laughs> I'm just going up to my room like normal. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Although, how about this? I'm gonna have you go around back, and I will. Th- I'm gonna put the shovel Drop out the, the shovel window down. so yes. that I don't go in and out that's with the shovel. Really good. Yeah, let's do it. I'll so, describe which window is mine yeah. around you the back. Can, it's just a couple windows down there. Right. Yep. As all this was going <laughs> on, <laughs> we haven't even done shit yet. Okay. Oh my gosh. Pivot to the interior there, in the sort of bath, uh, into the washroom there of Paramount Lodge. You wait and just sort of sit, let the warmth wash over you, alone with your thoughts a little bit. You hear the sounds of washing, scrubbing, and then there's a little bit of time that passes where it seems like he too is just sort of letting the water sort of soak and just wash over him. A little more time goes by. And then finally there's... As soon as I hear that, I'm getting up, I'm drying off, and I'm throwing my clothes on. Great, you do so. As quickly as I can. You do so very, very quickly, and he takes his time. There's a little kind of, you can even hear kind of a, <laughs> like some humming there coming from the opposite side of the room. Finally, some sounds of like patting down. And then it sounds like like a towel was kind of mm-hmm. thrown to the side there. <sighs> and he steps. And you can hear his footsteps kind of moving. And you're still in, you're, the privacy screen is still yeah. dividing you there. So if, if you were to sort of say something, he would kind of walk past uh-huh. you, maybe without even seeing you if he didn't look into the little nook there. I'm going to take a deep breath and time it so that as soon as he's like about to pass my screen, I'm going to open it up. <laughs> oh my god. You see him there, and he has, um, he looked like he brought a change of clothes with him as well. Uh-huh. He's wearing the same pants, but he has a different shirt on, the sort of a button-down mm-hmm. shirt there. His hair slicked back from the water. Ah, Ms. Mori. 
Good to see you again. Mr. Langford. Still don't recall how we met the first time? Of course. Perhaps you don't recall the conversations that we had on your wagon. I came here to set up a, a mining empire of my own. Not conducive for me to pretend to know people in town already. Man, you got me freaked out. What the <laughs> hell? Oh my God, I thought I was gonna have to throw a few punches for information or something. I was getting ready. I apologize. Anything you'd like to say to me in the privacy of this washroom? <laughs> How you been? I've been fine. I worked my way to Broncolo, same as you, it would seem. Yeah, you staying here? I am for a time. You want me to act like I have no idea who you are? That's up to you, but I will pretend not to know you. Pretty intense about this mining thing. <laughs> I understand that uh, this Mr. Bison runs a tight ship. So any lack of association on my part further distances myself from something that he might be trying to accomplish. Well, I wish you luck. It seems like Bison has this town in a firm grasp. Mm. I have a, a knack for loosening grips. <laughs> Through your charm or? <laughs> Are you busy tomorrow, Ms. Mooring? Um, I have some plans in the morning, but after that... I Important plans? I could leave a note. Hmm. I have some business in the downwield that uh, I could use an extra set of hands for. What kind of business? Oh. I saying, surveying. I'd like to see where I might be able to set up shop first. Well, what does this kind of business uh, pay? Why, Miss Maury? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have another job. I promise to get something done. How much does the other job pay? <laughs> <laughs> 250 gold. Make a deception check. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. knows all, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> 20. 350. Provided you give us uh, full attention of your services. She's gonna hold out her hand. And also provided that you ain't already in league with Mr. Bison himself. Not as far as I know. Shakes your hand. Let's go. Wow. I'll have a note sent to your room with some directions. This other business of yours, uh, here in town? Um, no, it's actually also gonna be uh, in the downwield, eastern area. Hmm. You might be able to tend to it when we're done. Yeah, maybe so we could work something out. Hmm. Well, that sounds mighty fine. I uh, trust that you can keep this just between us, given the magnitude of gold I am offering you. Sounds good to me. Hmm. You really freaked me out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know you were such a good actor. <laughs> well, a practiced hand at disassociation. That kind of freaks me out too, man, but we'll talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> this town is ripe for the plucking, Miss Maury. Let's pluck her. Not a word of this. If you want to see any of that gold. <laughs> and as he sort of moves toward the door, he has his jacket draped over his arm that he was wearing earlier in the thoroughfare that he now has taken off and, you know, as he was washing. And as he sort of said that last line, he flips the coat over his shoulder and you could swear maybe it was almost intentional. The coat just kind of falls open on his shoulder there. And on the interior, like sewn into the interior of the jacket, there's like four knives there that are tucked into various pockets that he sort of flips over his shoulder. I trust your silence. Uh, huh. And he walks out.
fucks out. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Fuck. Kate's gonna wait like a beat before walking out of the bathroom. Sure. Um, oh my. And then head upstairs um, to her room and get out her paper and ink and um, leave a message for Ilian and Doxley at probably at the front desk. Um, sure. Now I'm gonna have to talk to. Okay. <laughs> Are you leaving it at the front desk? Yeah. I'll, you I'll also know which room they're in if you want. Oh to yeah. Slip it under a door. That's true. I'll, I'll know where they are. I'll write it and then I'll I'll go to their room and I'll slide it under. Um, and just gonna say so sorry in all capitals. <laughs> <laughs> have to get breakfast with an old friend. Might be able to meet you guys in the afternoon if you're free to take care of these wolves. Okay. Do you leave directions to? I know that you don't have it written down there, mm. but where the dire wolves are, are you suggesting to meet them there? Because you could leave directions to that place. I wouldn't know what time that we would meet, though. That's what happens when you backstab. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, weird shit. Um. Yeah, okay, I'll just, I'll say, um, if you're interested and you're free, meet me here with the directions. Um, you could give a rough time frame. Around 3 p.m. Okay, great. And whose door do you slide that under? Don't, don't they, aren't they sharing a room? Uh, Doxley and Ilya. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. that they were the only ones invited. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but you finish up the note and you slide it under the door, and Doxley, <laughs> a note comes under the door as you're sort of sitting there in your room. <laughs> 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 and then you hear some footsteps. Where do you head afterward? Um, back to my room. Just back to your room. Yeah. Great. So you see the note kind of slip under the door there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and as all this is happening, Ilian, where were you headed after that? After I just see the town, just mm -hmm. back to my room. Great, so this is all sort of happening simultaneously, and we'll say that not shortly after Kate slips the note on the door, you find your way back to your room, sort of just knock to make sure, you know, Ilian, she, that Doxy's in there, open the door, and you find yourself. And you see her, you're kind of in the middle of like looking at it, at the note. I'm back. No, from Kate. <laughs> oh. She's uh, delaying our little mission until the afternoon, possibly. Getting okay. food with a friend, I suppose. Sure, I mean, it's her job. I'm just providing a favor. Yeah. Okay. Sit down, Ilian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will go sit on my bed. <laughs> 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 like, oh, wait. You're telling. <laughs> I was not, I'm not telling you that. Mm. Yeah, I'll sit opposite you, like, <clears throat> on my bed. I'll mirror you. Um. <laughs> <sighs> I understand why you felt the need to be honest, Dale. I do. And I'm sorry that I was visibly not happy about it. I know what it took to leave. And I can understand why. But? <laughs> not much of a but. Uh, just some words of caution a little bit. Niall's not our family. And I know he's pretty close to it. But right now, I think you and I need to operate as though you and I are the only family we've got. So, I know you don't, I know you practice honesty, but I don't want to see you get hurt, all right? Yeah, I, I believe I made a pretty uh, large miscalculation, which I usually wouldn't do. Um, I believe, I thought I believed that Niall, he also was coming to Broncolo to separate himself from the Gorionon. Uh, and I don't know what exactly is going on there, but I apologize that I misread 
all of that, and I caused a lot of confusion and might have ruined some things between you and him. Um. Well, confusion, yeah, but <laughs> you didn't ruin anything. Um, Good. Okay. Just a, a couple of, of, of things that Niall did advise us. We can't ride home, all right? Well. For anyone. As far as I was concerned, it was you and Niall I was expecting to talk to, and now uh, that ship has sailed, and so I agree with you. You're, you are my family here, and I'm done with the Gorionana. I don't wish to write home. That includes our grandmother, and I hope you know that and can understand why. Izzy runs all communication to this town, and any Tyrune is not good. Yeah. If things... I should be able, like I said earlier, which I know probably really irked you, um, give me a, a couple of days, maybe even just a day or two, and hopefully I can be more honest with you about what's, um, what I'm doing here. Um, and if that blows up into something bigger, then perhaps I can get something home to Shantara in a way that is not through Izzy, but I will cross that bridge when it comes, and by then you will be fully in the loop before any decision like that is ever made. <laughs> Elliot, what the fuck does she have you doing? She doesn't have me doing anything. I'm just investigating a few things, but I have to say it's mostly of my own will that I'm searching this out. She just gave me a couple of crumbs to follow. Because if Elian, I don't need to know your secrets, but if you're concerned that me just knowing what you're looking at here is gonna get me hurt, are in trouble? What the fuck is gonna happen to you? I don't know. Um, but I'm smart, Doc. And I'm strong. And I can handle it. And I know if things start going south, which they won't, I'll come straight to you and we can tackle it as a family. But I hope not even to get you looped into it. Or yes, when I know it's safe. If there is something that I can do to keep you safe, that you don't have to tell me what you're up to, just... Fuck, Elliot, I can't have anything happen to you here. You understand that? I know. I understand. You don't have to tell me something, but if you need some backup... You're the first one I'm going to, Good. and you know that. Because all our other friends are pretty shit. I think they're coming along. But yeah, I will tell you, <laughs> there is one person that I have told what I cannot tell you, but that is because they are expendable in my mind. That's the only reason I'm not telling you. Can you at least tell me who it is? Maybe I can just steer clear of them or something? It's Maeve. The alchemy woman? Yeah, she's making me something that I need to pick up tomorrow. And hopefully with it, I can figure out a bit more about what is going on, and then I can tell you more. It'll be okay, Doc. I have a good feeling about it. Okay. Just no talking to the outside world, please. Yeah. I have no interest in it. Okay. Again, I'm sorry, Doc, about earlier. It's okay. I, again, I understand. Okay. Just keep me posted on where you're at. I mean, when you go on these walks and you think and stuff, I don't know where you are and... Well, there's a graveyard in town. I didn't know that. I hadn't been that far up. Uh, I saw the Merc Hall. Oh, good. You took a look at the graveyard then. 
Yeah, God. graveyard. Yeah. But... Did you pick out a plot for yourself for when you get fucking killed? For... Looking in all of this, whatever you're looking into. Both of us, right next to the river. It's great. <sighs> great. Yeah. Um. Right by the water. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Well. Hope you enjoyed this too. I did. I ate the rest of the ones up here too. Okay. I'm gonna Let's get some rest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As you guys yeah. sort of are you making arrangements to to sleep. Yeah, I think so. I guess so. Yeah. Wake up at a solid two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> or you can at least sort of wind down. You can just yeah, sit and, yeah. and read. And Damn. Oh yeah, I'm reading my cookbook. Fun yeah. fairs. Um, <laughs> rather than sort of go through some of the minutia, was the plan to simply get the shovel and come back out to. Go upstairs, uh, uh, trick <laughs> what's his face, uh, and throw the shovel out the window. To me. Okay. I'm waiting. To Give me a out. stealth check as you sort of pick your moment perfectly to kind of slip by while he's speaking to one of the other patrons or okay. something like that. Um, 24. 24. It's much easier from here. Like it was a little trickier up on the landing where you couldn't get a perfect sight line, couldn't quite hear everything, but you can stand in the thoroughfare without worrying. No one's like, yeah. what's that guy doing standing in the, th there's a bunch of people around. So <laughs> you sort of, you're, you're kind of where they're starting to light up the bonfire. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, you just kind of peek over your shoulder. And as a, there's a pair of people that look like they're kind of walking in and you just slip right b b uh, behind them. And then as they go up to the desk, you just turn and already your back is facing him. For Out of the corner of your eye, he looks like he kind of leaned for a moment, but then quickly turns his attention back to the people. Mm -hmm. The desk. So you slip up, you go into your room, put the shovel, <sighs> open the window, yeah, and you see Morna waiting there. Look around a little bit. <sighs> <A -choo>! <laughs> <laughs> Give me uh, an athletics check with advantage. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> the noise of the. Um, that is a 23. As the shovel falls, you easily oh. catch it with one hand and you hear the sneeze and you're sort of confused <laughs> as to what that noise that was supposed to be covering, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm two floors up here. That would be yeah. a bit more of a. Yeah. <laughs> but also he thinks you're in your room. Yeah, no, I know. Oh, okay. I know. I just, more explanations. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just go back out. Great. As you open the door, you kind of step out into the hallway and you're turning to head back towards the staircase going down. Mm -hmm. But you look over to your left and the man that you crossed paths with on the lower landing is there at his room. He's kind of locking the door. <laughs> just keep going. And you head back downstairs. <sighs> Slip back outside, you meet back up with this one. mother is gonna unravel my whole business. <laughs> um, yep, just back downstairs. <clears throat> you guys meet back out with her. I'll shovel in hand. Now, I think it a good idea to take the long road. We'll almost, as though we're leaving town, and that'll bring us out to where we can kind of sneak back on the edge of the woods. And then I say that we... Do you know what grave it is? No, but it will be fresh. You know the name of the man? No. He was buried this morning. Okay. I doubt there will be many more. Even our friend that from this afternoon didn't even get a grave. So I, I would imagine it's it'll be the freshest of graves. <laughs> <sighs> but I know from casing it earlier that there is a mortuary over there that there is a gentleman more tuition of sorts. Oh. And I don't know his schedule, so I say that we stay on the edge of the the forest there for maybe several hours to get the comings and goings. We could possibly just take a small rest and yes. get an idea of when we can fully approach. Very well. All right. You start to make your way in a sort of northwesterly direction there. Just as was the case heading into the Paramount as you were uh, leaving the music box, the steady spread of rumor puts you on the receiving end of many sideways glances and not so subtle kind of, 
jerks of the head as people sort of indicate to their friends that you two were sort of at the crux of that uh, conflict. Is this shovel the size that could be, again, not fully obscured, but like in, I don't know, slightly under a jacket that it might... A little bit. It's too big to fit fully under your jacket, but... Um... All right. I would also say in a town like this, carrying a shovel is not, not that super strange. suspicious. All right, then I don't want to be weird about it. Then. <laughs> Just carry it regular. Okay. All right. So none of these looks seem to be born of suspicion or wariness. You just get the sense that when something of note goes down in this town, people are interested in who steps up to the challenge, especially when kind of religion and gods enter into it. As you heard from the Monteros and some other people, you know, everyone's sort of cognizant of who is and isn't sort of a man of God, a woman of God, you know, in a town like this. One person in particular who isn't making much of an effort to hide his interest in sort of giving you a glance over is a portly human man upon which every article of clothing hangs very loose. Baggy pants, baggy tucked in shirt, a rumpled overcoat, and a slackened tie where the knot has been pulled so far down it's kind of hanging right at his chest. His boxy, thin-rimmed spectacles are sliding down his nose in a way that forces him to tilt his head up to keep them from falling off his face, which could easily be remedied with his hands pushing them back up if they weren't already being used to kind of shovel peanuts into his mouth from a small satchel that he has. So he's like... Sort of peanut after peanut into his mouth. <laughs> okay. Long strands of greasy hair are tucked under a gray trilby hat that sits quite askew on his head. What's wrong with you? And after someone next to him leans close and whispers something in his ear, he spits out a wad of kind of peanut shell and he kind of shuffles towards you through the thoroughfare here. And he walks right up to you sort of confidently and give me a perception check as Come he gets on, guys. closer. Yup. Good gods. <laughs> Uh, 21. 21. Six. As he gets a little closer, you notice the reason why his hat is sitting askew on his head and why it's not sort of flat on his head. There is a large cutaneous horn jutting out from the left side of his head just above the oh, temple. No. Oh and a cutaneous horn is sort of, for those of you who don't know, it's like a, it's it's almost like a lesion, sort of an external lesion that sticks out of the head. And it's hard, it's it's yeah. like, it's made out of keratin. It's like a fingernail material that's sort of sticking out. So it makes it so just you can't, one. yeah, just one out uh, the side of the head. And it's making freak. it so his hat is kind <laughs> of just askew kidding, there just on his head. I'm just um, book, uh, give me a medicine check as a follow up to that as well. Uh, Both of us? Certainly no, wrong. perception and shank. Uh, 13. 13. It, sort of, you're familiar with the concept of the cutaneous horn. Usually it's born of excessive exposure to the sun. That's how they usually really? form, yeah. Wow. It's sort of like being outside for long, long periods of time and being out in the sun. You can see he has kind of weathered, sort of leathery skin as well that sort mm. of indicates further confirmation that he spends quite a bit of time outdoors. Mm -hmm. And as he kind of wanders up to you, he pops another sort of uh, peanut in his mouth. Okay, yeah. Description of you is more or less on the mark, though for some reason I picture you with a pacifier in your mouth. Just my bias against clandestine types, I guess. Though with the way I heard it went down trying to sneak up on those clinkers, you might be better served by a softer pair of shoes. And you. I guess it wasn't spelled out explicit that you don't leave in the middle of one job to do another. Fleabags come to town like their asses on fire, gotta do everything all at once. So slow down and enjoy the smell of the horse manure, yeah? Now look, there's a top tier fuss taking place across the street from EOD, and I come to find that you two are at the heart of it. Snakes don't make you piss your trousers, eh? Better than some of the mopes I have working for me. <laughs> it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, sir. Sir, sir, he calls me sir, he says. Look, I got a job for you. Oh, Ace, reliable sort that she is, says you got a good head on your puny little shoulders. Mm. Maybe you'd relish the opportunity to correct your mistake. <laughs> In the eastern part of the downwheel, there's an area where a fat pack of dire wolves are fucking up everyone's shit. 
If you've taken a turn at the Merc Hall, you might have heard of it already. Now, I don't give a rat's ass about the wolves, but somebody's fled there that I need to speak to. Ace thinks she's pinpointed his location to a little hidey hole rigged up with booby traps and whatnot. And the wolves provide a nice deterrent to keep others from sniffing away to his stink. Now, it's more than a one-woman job to get him and bring him back. But I can't spare my muscle because I currently have clinkers breathing down my fucking neck over some bullshit. Story for a different time. Right. So what you say? Shall I tell Ace to come get you first thing in the morning? I suppose you require this person brought back unspoiled. Yeah. I ain't gonna tell you what I need him for, but as I understand that others are more sensitive than I, I can promise you my aim is not to hurt this man. In fact, quite the opposite. I plan to put his ass on a wagon and send him west out of Broncolor so that we, we don't cross paths no more. A corpse then would not be useful to you. No, I need him alive. And this person, I imagine, will not be eager to join us. Yeah, he's probably not gonna fucking come willingly. That's sort of the point. Otherwise, I'd go fucking do it. Right, right. All right, Mr. Stott, we will help you. All right, Mr. what? Mr. Stott? Yeah. Why do people always say my name like it's a fucking disease? I was merely trying to be polite, but I will say your name how you wish to have me say it. It's Bison. Hey, Bison. Yeah. <laughs> What were you doing, by the by, I, when you were supposed to be doing lookout? I, up on a hill. Yes, I. <laughs> before Delia came to get you. I had stepped away for a moment. I actually thought people would wait, and then I came back, and I was relieving myself. <laughs> I got mine to do that right now. So, can I count on you? If you're still friendly with the others that you did the cliff job with, feel free to bring him along. I suppose if the man makes a run for it, the more legs giving chase, the better. I got gold enough to pay for it. Oh, we will, uh, yes. We'll... It's time of the essence with this particular job. I told you, she'd meet you in the morning, yeah. We'll do it. We will be available. We'll do it. All right. Can I get an affirmation one way or the other from you? Very well. Good. All right, then, on your way. I'm off to find a hole to squat over because I got a turd brewing and won't wait to the end of this sentence to breathe the evening air. Ace will provide the details. Best of luck to you, sir. And before you're finished with that, he's already oh gone. Oh my God. Good gods, what a revolting <sighs> man. We are not in a position to say no. There are people that will... There are people that will not. It is one more job. For this person in particular. We will take another from another party interested. And some might not give us a job after we've done one for him. We have already done one for him. <laughs> that could Let be passed us prove off to as... Let pre-agents. That could be passed off as a naive... Fleabag's opportunity. But a second job would put us in his corner and that might close other doors. Then we will immediately seek another corner. <laughs> Do you not want to ingratiate yourself with the big players in town? I don't believe other doors will be closed. Let us not do a third. <laughs> there are rules about threes, is there not? <laughs> Comedy comes in threes, I've heard. Bad news. <laughs> Death. Yes, exactly. It will be fine. Let's see if we make it to the morning, I suppose. We will make it. It's just one little nobody, right? Right? This? Yes. Yes. I fear you are holding something back. I don't know uh, details of the the person. Very well, off we go. <laughs> <laughs> On your way to the North End Bridge, you pass by several dwellings, some of them with illuminated interiors and some of them without, presumably some people getting an early night's rest. One of the structures that has gone dark for the night is what Morna knows to be trusted timber. Oh. 
The ambient light from Bernard's boarding, however, is enough to see that Josie has been working her ass off to complete the order that she mentioned when you last spoke. Resting against the side of her storehouse are several large, carefully crafted pieces of what you assume will become the treadwheel crane. Wheels, slats, beams, bases, all of them standing by to be carted out and then assembled on site. And from the look of it, she probably isn't more than a day or so away from being able to deliver this to him. Okay. As you get closer to the river, you're mildly dismayed to see that one place you might want to be cloaked in darkness is not. There's a flickering lantern hanging above the front steps of the mortuary, mm -hmm. casting, causing the sort of mostly predominantly displayed tombstones to cast these long shadows across the level ground of the graveyard. With such a one-track mind the last time you were here, you didn't fully take in just how big a piece of land the cemetery is. A blessing and a curse for your current intentions because there's room to maneuver, staying you know in and out of sight but also a lot of ground to cover to find the right grave that might be right for defiling. So that's what you sort of see as you're getting over the bridge there on the northwest end. Is there is there enough moonlight that were we close to a grave, we could tell, see enough uh, disturbed ground? Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. we wouldn't need to light a torch is what I'm getting. No. At. Okay, but again, we'd have to probably be close to it. Yes, you would have to be close yeah. to it. I mean, touching it would help too. You could right. see that the earth is softer having been recently dug. Right. And is there any way to tell like, oh, this is the newer part of the cemetery, this is the older part, like towards the front or towards the back? Um, I will say, I'll actually, it's a good question, but TC having been there before, it did seem like it was moving, like it started closer to the river and is moving further out. Yeah. So you saw a bigger yeah. cluster of stones and then like it gets more and more dispersed the closer it gets to the edge okay. of the, the woods. Okay. So he could relay that information to her, but yes, yeah. it does, you can kind of tell where they're in the direction that they're working as they right. continue to bury bodies. And do each of them have names? Are there unmarked and As marked? you were walking through, most of them had at least a name. They're, they vary greatly in the Style. Gra yeah, style and yeah. grandiosity of the tombstones. Some of them are quite large and made of sort of a fancy marble. Some of them are just a flat stone on the ground. Like, it, but yes, most of them have at least a name. There's a, there was probably a couple unmarked ones that people might have not known who it was, like somebody yeah. who died on the way, or you know, someone who didn't. Right. You know, they didn't know who it was. But <sighs> all right. Uh, sorry. So we were just coming up to the river here, and you're saying that there is light kind of being cast from the mortuary. There's uh, a lantern hanging okay. like above the, there's like a small porch of the mortuary yeah. and there's the lantern hanging there. But and we're not the, close enough that somebody would like see or recognize us. No, I mean, bridge. I'm saying you guys are just getting over the bridge. Gotcha. So okay. you haven't even entered into the right. cemetery proper yet. All right. And as I kind of suggested, there is a point where it gets to be wooded that mm -hmm. we could conceivably then loop back around through yes. the wooded area. You could do that. All right, you see the mortuary there. Yes, sir. Seems like he's still awake. Hmm. I say that we, again, wait on the edge of the wood, see if maybe he ever puts the lantern out, but at least wait a few hours, and then case the cemetery itself well. for the fresh grave. Ah, it is too bad we don't have Kate's ability to simply disappear herself into the darkness. Darkness can be your friend, no matter your race. Just keep quiet and still and... Wait patiently. Yes, hmm. yes. Make our way. You walk past, there's like that fence on your left hand side that there's a gate you would walk through to kind of get into it the proper way. Mm -hmm. You walk past that and you're kind of walking along the path that you use to come into town, but then you make sure that kind of no one's watching and then you slip into the woods and you work your way kind of through there. I still, and you're yeah. kind of just on the perimeter there. So you're at like the tree line, kind of mm. moving between tree to tree. <laughs> Both of you give me perception. Come on. Please. Perceive, oh, come on. 26. Jesus. 12. 12. Okay. <laughs> it's more that, so both of you catch sight of, in the interior of the mortuary, someone moving around in there. There's someone in there. You can see shadows kind of moving from window to window. With the strength of that perception check, I will say, <laughs> it's not the person you followed. Farming <laughs> simulator. <laughs> <laughs> the figure. <laughs> Their figure is much more lithe 
like okay. the person you were following was a little bulky, yeah. Yeah. and this person is clearly shorter, skinnier. Yeah. It's a different person, almost a hundred percent. That's Fuck. in the interior. All right. Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, <laughs> just playing the game. Um, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Are you quite? Are you quite? Quite well, Mr. Um, <laughs> what? Are you quite well? Yes. Yes. It's just unfortunate that our the friend there. In in in, in fact. This is a, this might be a different person than than one I saw. They might be in shifts here. Ah. So I say we post up here, take a few hours, and watch the lantern, watch the windows. Very well. All right. Kind of find a spot that can see most of the graveyard, see where the lantern is hanging, and is the objective here to take a short rest while you? Go yeah. ahead and do so right now. Yeah. Um, a little time goes by as you guys lurk on the edge. And the person within, sort of, you see them move back and forth across the windows. At one point, as you're sort of sitting there, the person comes out onto the porch. And it seems that the reason they kind of come out is they reach up and they hold something to the lantern and then smoking some kind of cigarette or something. It doesn't appear bluish in color. It doesn't yep. seem like it's that. Okay. In addition, as they come out on the porch, you get a better look. It's a woman, it's an elven woman. So again, okay. further confirmation that it's definitely not the person that you yeah. saw before. She has kind of, uh, she has sort of pursed lips and very heavy crease lines in her face. Sort of, an el not elderly, but an older elven woman. Okay. It sort of comes out. And she, as you're just sort of resting there, she sort of smokes for a while. She never kind of wanders out into the graveyard. She yeah. just doesn't, you know, doesn't want to smoke in the mortuary, and then eventually sort of throws, stamps out the cigarette, goes back inside, and closes. The light stays on. Yeah. However, you no longer, as some time has passed, see her kind of moving about the mortuary. Okay. You don't see any more shadows or figures moving, but the again, the light is still lit on the, the porch there. When I was in there, were there like sleeping quarters that I saw? Really? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Now, I mean, it's it's been it's probably close to eleven midnight at this point. Sure. How long do you wish to wait? <laughs> yeah, I mean, two hours, something like that. Or you do so. So yeah, it gets close yeah, to midnight close and. To midnight. All right. You, you can, as you kind of. Her coat. Tighter over yeah. Her As you look, just glancing back in the direction of sound, you can slowly see, you know, people's the interior yeah. lights go out, kind of one at a time. Slowly, the town gets Throughout darker town. and darker. Yeah, as people sort of. At, at one point, you can see the corridors are raging fire over near Paramount, just because it's visible from so far away. The bonfire, a couple, you know, an hour goes by, and eventually it dies down and down and down. More and more lights. <sighs> All right. I think it might be time to start. Finding the patch of dirt that we need. Yes. If you want, I'll go out first and just do a very slow. Do you wish for me to keep watch? Yes, just keep watch for now. Um, okay. how are you at bird calls? Uh, good. Do a <laughs> red-breasted warbler for me. <laughs> It goes like, tweet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> maybe just tweet. a low, maybe just a low whistle of some kind, if. Like a, like a. <laughs> little loud, a little louder. <laughs> All right, I'll work, I'll work on it. Okay. <laughs> well, don't work on it because then I'll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't. Okay. I'll, All right. I'll, I'll, I got you. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. I'll be back. Okay. You keep the shovel for now. You I'm, got not, it. I'm not gonna. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna give me a stealth check. Oh my god. And an investigation check. Okay. In that order, and give me a perception check as you're keeping watch there. <laughs> stealth mm -hmm. and investigation. Yeah. Yes. All right. <gasps> Are you killing me? Are you killing me over here? Killing you. All right. Stealth is nineteen. <laughs> What was your perception? Three. three. Okay. Oh no! They really should have brought it and he put it up beside me. Yeah. Cheesy! Cheesy! The old 
TC Warbler. Oh my <laughs> god. TC, TC. <laughs> I'm here for you, baby. Oh, tweet, man. tweet. Nine. Nine, okay. You start with the furthest parts from the mortuary, just sort of doing your, even if you haven't seen someone moving about, making sure that you know, you're know you not seen any sooner than you would have to be. And as you're doing so, you are looking for any signs of freshly dug graves, anything that, that gives an indication, sorry. And gnomish names, if I, or unmarked. Unmarked and gnomish names. Give me a history check. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. yeah. And Morna, as you're watching him go from grave to grave, you can give me a history check as well. 17. Oh, I got another minus on this one. Let's go. <laughs> oh my God. Oh God. Uh, that's a nine. <laughs> okay. TC, as you're in, you start to read names tombstone to tombstone, you recall that there is sort of a gnomish district in Peron mm-hmm. that you have been to before. Mm-hmm. And gnomish last names are very commonly compound words. Not always, but very commonly. Rosewood, Stonewall, Pinkman, like two words smashed together. That's a very common sort of gnomish gotcha. last name trait. Gotcha. As you're looking from grave to grave, you see a couple of options for things that look relatively fresh. And it's a little difficult to tell because it did rain pretty heavily earlier in the day. So yeah. some of the earth is built up. However, some places are clearly more recent than others. Like obviously softer dirt, there's patches where the grass has not kind of started to creep and grow over it again. Mm-hmm. You see a few tombstones. The first ones that you see are Maggie Cobblefall, Otis Bristol, and Eric Appleshoe. And also, as you're sort of working the perimeter here of the graveyard, there's you haven't gotten so close to the river that you're like, that you're sure that you're looking at people long buried ago. There's probably a few patches that you're looking at from a distance that you need to creep a little closer to see that are a little closer to the mortuary and you would need to get a little bit closer. But those three right off the bat. She used like he, him pronouns. She did indeed. talking about the deep non. Maggie, Otis, and Eric were the three names you just gave me. Mm -hmm. And they all seemed pretty fresh. Fresh, definitely noticeably fresher than like a lot of the other patches there. Yeah, absent of grass that's grown over, sort of. I'm gonna get the littlest bit closer to get just a... Give me another stealth check. As he's doing that, your perception check. <laughs> <laughs> Don't As, laugh! Oh no! <laughs> she laughing. was making a funny okay. thing. Okay. <laughs> As he's creeping around and you're watching, you sort of keep an eye on the bridge, the path, the water, and you hear out of the just behind you to your right, sort of a. And you look over to your right, and there's kind of a mangy wild dog. That has just crept a little closer. It doesn't look like, it doesn't have a collar or anything. It's clearly like a wild dog. And it's just kind of sensed your presence there and you can see it kind of. Get out of here, you. And and the the growling starts to get a little louder. Like it seems like it's revving up to a bark almost. Oh no. Give me an animal handling jack. Oh wow. Come on, dear girl. Don't. Come on, girl. And you you can hear this oh. from the perimeter there. I kind of get low, even lower than I was maybe. Do I have any like tack on me? You would have some rations, okay, yes. I'm gonna... oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Throw it, so you it throw out. it. Yeah, give me an athletics check, uh, just to toss it. I never gave you my stealth. Oh my fucking Holy god. Oh. Six. Six. In the dark here and in the woods, it seems like it didn't even see it. Like you threw it and it, and you, the barking is getting a little bit louder. TC, as you're there among the gravestones, you suddenly see a shadow moving through the windows of the mortuary. Oh, I got a dirty 20 on my stealth. Okay, you as you Ooh. see that, you immediately like pinpoint one of the larger gravestones and you put your back up against it. So the mortuary is behind you and you're sort of fully kind of covered here and you hear the door kind of swing open and someone steps out onto the porch. The dog. I'm going to sort of get down um, and and I'm, I'm going to um, be like. 
<laughs> it's it's like creeping a little closer to you. Uh, Is there she's anything gonna pull out a barb and be like, <laughs> "Give me an intimidation check." Okay, yes. you can do yes. this. You yes. can do this. Yes, Boom. I'm gonna use your. <laughs> Oh, but I'm gonna get my stank on it. <laughs> Dude, you're a yes! 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 16. 16. As you take out the weapon, it catches a little bit of the moonlight glint, and it can see that it's something sort of sharp and metal, and immediately <sighs> takes a couple kind of steps back. <laughs> She's like on the ground. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it. Oh my God. Sort of scatters off into the woods there. You wait and you listen. And there's. Oh my God. Thank you. She's gonna like Thank look you so up. Much for help. Yeah, I'm uh, happy to help. Happy to help. <laughs> She's gonna look up at this guy and just be like, Thank you. And she's gonna stand back up and see if she can see. see. <laughs> give me another perception check and give me an investigation check. Now that you you waited for the door to close, you heard it close behind her. Back on track. Oh yeah, there she is. Uh, holy fuck, it's an eight. Okay, seven. Seven. Stick with Erica's You pick up one more name, Irma Zane. And as you're looking at that relatively freshly dug grave. There's another one even a little closer to the mortuary that looks like it's also a little bit fresh and you can't read the name from kind of where you are with that investigation, Jane. I'm gonna rack my brain for if I know deep gnome names, if they have any kind of uh, special. Not distinctly from that. That, that. That's what you were able to recall about kind of gnome names. I'm gonna try to creep a little closer. Give me a stealth. Um, 24. Okay. Ooh. Give me another investigation check. You're silently moving between them as each time you take a couple steps and you wait just to see if you see any shadows or hear anything. Nothing yet. <laughs> You're going to him. 11. 11. Pick up one more name. Jesus. Winslow Ridgewater. And to your knowledge, having at least crept through a good portion, those look like the five relatively freshly dug graves. Maggie Cobblefall, Otis Bristol, Winslow Ridgewater, Eric Appleshoe, and Irma Zane. Would I know a deep gnome by sight? Do they have? Yes. Okay. So there's gnomes of all different kinds, but deep gnomes have very dark skin, grays, blacks, uh, like deep blues, like an indigo color. Their their skin is distinctly different from other gnomes. I gotta dig up three fucking graves. All right. You gotta have your buddy come and sneak, look. Sneak back. Sneak back. Kind of very keeping low. Get back to where I know that thing. there was a dog a minute ago. <laughs> three. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wild dog came in. And you had a conversation with him? No, he barked at me. You couldn't silence him or send him away somehow? I, I did. <gasps> but not without him barking. All right. <laughs> First. I, found, I got that. Yeah. I found three possible graves. You want me to take a look at it? I'm going to tell you some names. <laughs> okay. Cobblefall, Apple Shoe, yeah. Ridgewater. They mean anything to you, or they do they give you any kind of inkling towards? They don't. As TC describes the names, he does kind of a loose like pointing to roughly where they are. You know, Ridgewater, Apple Shoot. So he's like pointing, and you look out there, and you can see that the tombstones are made of different materials. <gasps> oh yo. Some of them, <laughs> some of them I rather even... mundane. Some of them fancier. It's like some stones clearly, you know, of a, of a higher caliber, a higher value. Okay. So you can see that as he points to them. You can't see exactly the material, but whether by description or by looking yourself, you might be able to determine 
something about them based on. Okay, and do I think that deep gnomes probably don't have that much money? Um, not in necessarily. Brunhard? However, in this conversation, do you remember from Maeve what the deep gnome was doing when it was oh. killed, supposedly? Oh. oh, that is a deep hole. <laughs> <laughs> Prospecting. <gasps> oh. Fuck. oh! Was he good at prospecting? I no, I don't know. I think he worked. <sighs> Maybe at the dig sites. I can't recall right now. Okay. I mean, with the with what you recalled about compound names mm-hmm. and recalling that Maeve referred with he him pronouns. You're sort of narrowed down to two, to Winslow, Ridgewater, and Eric Appleshoe. Mm -hmm. And as you point them out and you take a look, one of the stones is noticeably more ornate than the other. So basically you're choosing between one that might have a bit of wealth and one that might not. In fact, as you sort of give a look and with the moonlight shining down, one of the monuments that when TC indicated seems to be the Eric Appleshoe uh, tombstone is made with a blue granite that you recognize, and that is a expensive stone, yes. Yeah. To your knowledge, you haven't seen that or heard of that around Brunkhall, so that could have been an imported tombstone. So that is so there's one that's clearly of a higher wealth, while the other one's very simple and mundane. Right. Do you think this man was quite wealthy? I, I do not think so. I think it would be the latter. Okay. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I say we go for Winslow. You got the shovel? Follow my steps. Me to do it? No, no, I, I will do it. Follow my steps exactly and keep watch. Yes. All right. <laughs> Knowing kind of the... Yep. Both of you give me stealth checks. You really you can give them. let me dig for my athletics, but I'll keep watch. Oh, I see what you're saying. Both with advantage. You both know the way. It's not super close to the mortuary and you're in darkness here, so give me with advantage. with advantage. Yep. Holy shit, a one and a... Yeah. Um... <laughs> Oh, 21. <laughs> D! Oh my other one was a two! Holy shit! As you're creeping a little closer, <laughs> Morna, who hasn't handed the shovel off to TC yet, you guys are That's creeping awesome. and boom, your shovel hits one oh. of the tombstones oh. and kind of rings out. I'm gonna like slowly. drop to the ground. Slowly down. And once again, Is there someone out there? Hello? And at that, you hear kind of a <laughs> mangy mutt. Hand over Morna's. You hear the door close. However, you also hear and you look back over to the tree line where the dog is creeping a little bit closer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> How far away are we? 30 feet. I'm gonna try to <coughs> <laughs> use a grave and make a movement. And I'm gonna try to. She's gonna just stand up with Bob. I'll try to, like, yeah hide myself yep. on a gravestone mm-hmm. and like throat shot. I'm, I'm aiming for a throat. You mean a tackle with advantage? Let's go. Come on. Um, 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 23. Double hit, roll for damage. Um, this is a sneak attack, yes. Mm-hmm. Yay. Get in there, I can't, done. I can't with this anymore. Oh God. Finish this. Oh. Eleven damage, <laughs> and just and still nothing from the mortuary. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I take the I take the shovel slowly. You get up to the Winslow Ridgewater tombstone. You see, you can see now that the earth here is unlike some of the others. We're a little more freshly dug. 
Maybe we should take turns. It might take a little while. I'll start. Okay. My dirty business. Very well. Both of you give me athletics tricks. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Five. Twelve. Twelve. It takes a little more time than the two of you would like. The ground, it's gotten a little cold out and the ground's a little harder. <laughs> you're doing great. A couple times you kind of hand it off, you just kind of pause in between to see if you hear anything. With the dog having been slain, luckily no more sort of growling from the line of the trees. And again, maybe taking more effort than you thought initially, but eventually you hand off the shovel to Morna and <laughs> You hit something kind of hollow there on the ground. All right. Kind of with hands now, just yeah. getting it clear oh, it. in such a way that it's not disturbing. Them. There is a sort of a simple coffin. That's... Is there any kind of lock on it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm gonna stick, yeah. I'm gonna stick Bill in and just kind of like pop it open. <laughs> yeah. Cracking the coffin, you kind of brace and shift the lid so that it slides open. And looking inside, you breathe. Oh, my oh. Silent sigh of relief. Yes. <sighs> as you see a gnome with very dark gray as their sort of skin tone, may, could be even be blue, hard to tell in the nighttime light here. You see that liver mortis has set in, which makes the back of the gnome's neck, chest, and legs appear very mm. bloated mm. as gravity has brought the blood down toward the ground without sort of the heart working to pump it through the body. <laughs> That's good though. <laughs> There's a little bit of a stench of decomposition, but with the rank odor of the Nilbog basement still etched into your memory, this is practically a pleasant aroma in comparison. <laughs> Take one last look around, make sure nobody is about to witness an act of sampling, and you prepare to do what you can. I might take this part. Okay. Now, as you say, the blood is pooling. Yeah. At the back of the neck. Yeah, so you can see it's noticeably bloated and a little, the skin tone is even darker. It's a little paler toward the top, the front of the face, and then darker toward the back. I'm gonna take out one of these. I'm gonna first kind of feel and get a good idea of where Very it's- Very kind of mushy to the oh. touch. The yeah. biggest, fattest, lumpiest, <laughs> goopiest area. And I'm gonna... Slowly you pull one full syringe of blood there. As he's doing that, give me an investigation check. Why? Oh, now it <laughs> fucking happens. Uh, that's a dirty 20. TC's very focused on the task, but you notice that there's seem to be like defensive wounds on the forearms of this gnome. You can see scratch and bite marks that possibly, you know, there's a lot of dangerous creatures in the downwheel and the upwheel. It could have been an encounter like that. It does specifically look like like teeth marks, like bite marks. So um, maybe not uh, someone, if you've suspected foul play of someone killing them, there's evidence to look like it was a creature of some kind. Mm -hmm. However, there are also some puncture marks along the leg that look like they could have been made by like caltrops, like someone falling on caltrops or something. Like there's a number of small little, almost like diamond shaped puncture wounds Ooh, yeah. down the leg that you mm. notice. So it's just something that you notice as you're sort of working away. And do I notice anything magical about the body? No, you do not. Okay. No. Um, great. And do I have anything that I could hold blood in? You I have that empty, healing potion bottle from earlier. Yes, you don't have anything to like neatly extract it, but a glass container you do have. Yes, an empty potion bottle. I'm gonna let you do your thing, but. TZ does the second one, gets the third one. Three full syringes. I'm gonna look up at Morna, seeing her hungry eyes. <laughs> oh my god. Is there feeling, does it seem like I could conceivably get another full syringe yeah. from a different spot? Sure. Syringes aren't that big. Yeah. Uh, I took a yellow sperm bolt antidote earlier. Smaller than a healing potion maybe, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna take out an empty vial, take one of the syringes, That's all I've 
got to fill. You got anything else? I'm gonna hand him my healing potion bottle. It's a little larger, Ooh. bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna first fill up the, yeah. the third syringe again. Fills all the way. Up. Fills all the way. Perhaps let's trade it back. I'll, I'll, you know, it doesn't maybe doesn't fill up the the. Yeah, I mean, it would be the same amount of liquid because yeah. you did a full syringe for both of them, but okay. it's just one of them's in a slightly larger container. I can use barb and cut him, if that is better. Oh no no no! I just mean. You take this, and maybe I'll take that flask back. Oh, yes. She's sad about that, but okay. <laughs> so I'll keep it's the same amount of liquid. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just in a bigger container. He did a full syringe for both. Yours <laughs> full just, syringe for both. Yours doesn't look full, and his looks full I just because it's a small. I was thinking you were giving me two, but <laughs> sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. But quickly, again, try to fill that third oh. syringe. It fills again. Let's get some frog. Fills all the way up. Open up that bottle again. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. I try to go for another. Suck it this time, girl. as you get close to the end, you're yeah. pulling on it, and it gets all the way full, okay. but it also feels like it's got, it's got some stress to it, so oh. you're pushing the limits of perhaps. I think we've Very well. suckled enough of the tea tonight. <laughs> You also didn't uh, put a second full syringe into the bottle. It's not twice okay. as big. So you put about a syringe and a half full of, of okay. blood in, in your vial. All right, it's time to clear out. And I'm gonna carefully, if there's some kind of like locking mechanism on the, not <laughs> locking, but like a, so that I'm not accidentally depressing the syringe oh, yeah. in my pocket. The, the syringes like have, a, so as you pull it all the way up, there's like a little tube that yeah. fits in to keep it from pressing. Make sure those are all steady. Uh, uh, put a handkerchief in between them so they're not clinking around, stuff like that. Uh, all right. Climb up. Oh, yeah, close it up. Rest well. Climb out. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, Oh, shit. The way to, it's gone. Yeah. yeah. Start okay. to just push, push dirt. Yeah. Know, scoop. With how, as quickly as possible. Again, you know, taking turns, kind of looking at the mortuary, listening out. Can let you see there? All right. I'm going to scoop up that dog on the way out. Yes. Uh, you take the bolt. I will deposit it. Unless you have other plans for him. No, but we can do it together. Okay, right. great. Yeah. As you guys head toward the tree line, work your way to the... Towards the dog first. Yeah, he's okay. at the tree oh, line. But he was there on the, <laughs> at the edge of the cemetery there. I didn't know if he made it kind of... No, no, you work his way over there. You give a quick look around, you grab, you sort of drag the dog corpse there further into the woods, and yeah. that's where we're going to end oh. for this evening. Yeah. You um, well, thank you for good job, guys. Well done. Thank Way you for pushing out a little. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. oh, man. Oh. I did oh. not know where that was going, but good job, guys. <laughs> That is where oh. we are going oh. to pick it up. Um, you murdered that dog dead. <laughs> as as uh, oh, Kate shit. goes off to a secret clandestine meeting with <gasps> Mr. Langford, we say goodbye to Erica uh, for yeah, next week. Go. <laughs> um, but uh, as was loosely implied by Mr. Bison himself, Ace is back next week. We have Kelly, we have Kelly back next week. Um, to Kelly guide Kyle. the party uh, through whatever sort of uh, man that is being tracked down there for whatever purposes Bison has in mind. But that's where we're gonna pick up for next week. Yes. So uh, we will we will probably be picking up in the morning, uh, unless there's, I mean, you could tell me off stream if there's any last minute things you wanted to do, but we're gonna pick up in the morning. In addition to that, um, welcome to level four, everyone. <gasps> Yo! No as you way. wake up for your wow. third morning in Broncolo, having gotten I thought, pretty oh. much a full lay of the land here. Oh, Wait, is that a, God. no, proficiency doesn't go up yet. Not that, yet. Oh. No. Not yet, not yet. But feet. <laughs> feet! Oh, oh, we get feet! feet. We get feet! Oh. Yes, uh, I know our, our, <laughs> our sort of custom, oh. custom sort of homebrewy uh, way we're going about <laughs> oh, it is yeah. there's no ASI, no ability score yeah. increase. It's feats only to sort of mix up the variety and stuff. Oh. So everybody gets a chance to pick out a new feat. Oh. Bit more health. Oh. Yeah. Bit more health. Oh. More health. Oh my god, we have to roll for HP. Yeah. Oh my god. HP. Oh no. We have oh. Uh, a new oh, character HP. sheets that we'll print out that have your new stats and stuff. Well, not, just HP really. That's the only thing that changes. Um, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, we ran a little late. We're gonna take a quick little break here. 
Um, and then we'll be back for some Notch and Soda. Yeah. Um, plug your thing one more time. Oh, yeah. oh, see you with Brandon. It's the Percy Jackson podcast. We're talking about the show. I've been doing this <laughs> podcast for three and a half years with the hopes to talk about the show, and now it's finally time. The show is yeah. finally yeah. coming. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, if you're a Percy amazing. Jackson fan, hop on over there and give it a listen. You didn't say what it was called. Uh, seaweed did. Brain. Oh, did, you did? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Seaweed Brain. Seaweed Brain. Seaweed Brain. Seaweed Brain. Seaweed Brain. Seaweed Brain. Seaweed Brain podcast. You can find us on Instagram. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much. Well done, everybody. Yes. Um, and, oh my God. Uh, level up, and um, Good job. Good job. Good job. that's where we're gonna pick it up next week. Yeah. Did you wanna? Um, uh, yeah, I think it was only a couple quick people. Uh, <laughs> Pokedoko Seven Stream Streak. Uh, Vexalon resubscribed. Hello, thank you. Ecap, uh, Ecap uh, resubscribed as well. Ali Slayer did 100 bits. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, Mahi, I can't remember if I already said this one, but gifted a sub. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mahi. We really appreciate it. There was a lot of support tonight. We really appreciate everything. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're a subscriber on Twitch, go ahead and stick around. We're going to um, just give the cast a quick little bathroom break to grab a drink and stuff. Um, and we'll be right back for a Notch and Soda, which is a subscriber only kind of talk back. We'll answer questions in the chat and stuff like that. Um, That's so fun. Uh, 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 if you're watching on TikTok, you can go ahead and find us there. And if you want to subscribe, you'll get like a little preview of the show. Um, just to see if you like it first. <laughs> just um, a you think we'll just a little tist. Think we'll roll those HP during Notch and Soda? Uh, no, not during Notch and Soda. <sighs> well, we gotta record it somehow, so we gotta figure that out. But yeah, I was gonna say because we should do it before. Yeah. I, she's not sticking around for Notch and Soda. I know. We gotta bounce. We gotta do it. We just gotta, gotta be out of here. We gotta bang it out. Yeah. We'll bang it out before yeah. we go live okay. with Notch and Soda. We can yep. do it. I no. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll figure it out. All right. I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. I, I don't. I think that's that's all that I've got. Right. Um, enjoy what some bloopers. They're the same as last week. Enjoy some bloopers. We don't mess up a lot. So there's like. <laughs> yeah, there's only there, so many there's bloopers. There's only so much. Um, Pokodo, Pokodoko should be making a little thing in the Discord as well. Join the Discord. Uh, Discord.gg slash tabletop notch and mm -hmm. and uh, to chat. About this, this episode. This episode. Please. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Check out the amazing <coughs> fan art, everybody. Yes. Yeah. So cool. And the edits. Yes. And the sweet edits. Oh no. <laughs> what now? Oh no. What? We'll talk so about it in Notch and Soda. Okay, Notch and Soda. We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. We'll be right back.